Just a couple of miles from the pond is Disneyland. Either Maine or New Hampshire will be the happiest college hockey team on earth by night's end. There can only be one champion. For New Hampshire and Maine, one game will determine that champion. 60 minutes with everything on the line. The NCAA College Hockey National Championship game comes up next. From the Arrowhead Pond in Anaheim, ESPN proudly presents exclusive coverage of the NCAA College Hockey National Championship game made against New Hampshire. Hi again, everyone. Dave Bryan with you from Anaheim. Welcome to what started off as our Frozen Four, down to just the Frozen Two in UNH and Maine. And to get here to the National Championship, each team had a very tough battle. First of all, in the national semifinals, Maine needed sudden death overtime to beat Boston College, while UNH exploded for five goals against the nation's best defensive team, Michigan State, winning by two. We welcome in Brian Engblom once again. Alfie Michaud, the UMaine goalie, leads the nation with 27 wins. He was spectacular in the semifinals. Alfie Michaud is the single biggest reason that Maine is playing in this game today. His team did not bring their A game. He was absolutely a prop. An unbelievable athlete. He has changed his game a little bit since he started with the University of Maine. He doesn't flop as often. He has moved out a little bit more. Super aggressive and a terrific glove hand. Another big factor in this game will be Steve Correa. Look at those eyes. He is angry at himself. He was being watched very closely in the last game against Boston College. He knew that would happen, but he didn't feel like he did enough to get around it. He'll be working hard tonight. You can bet on that. You sure will, Brian. He and his entire line were shut out in that game against Boston College. Coming up, we will talk history the Wildcats of UNH in the first ever national championship game. They take on Maine on the way. When it comes to building a comfortable home, you certainly have your options. good as it looks requires an essential. Ask for Tyvek Home Wrap from DuPont. It helps keep weather out, comfort in. And that's basic to better building. Larry Walker, a Golden Glove Dutch with an MVP bat. Watch him light up the box score as Baseball 99 kicks off on the Mexico border. Rockies Padres, an ESPN special. Opening night, tomorrow at 8 on ESPN. Welcome back, everyone, to the Pond. Dave Ryan, Brian Engblom for UNH. Plenty of history to talk about. Their first ever appearance in the national championship game and their first ever Hobie Baker Award winner in Jason Krog. And, of course, his line must play great tonight. Krog, Susan, and Hadar were spectacular in the last game. Maybe the number one line in the nation. Jason Krog is the main guy that makes them go. The leading scorer in the country. But what I really like about this line is the way Hadar and Souza pick things up when Jason Krog is being watched very closely. And that certainly will happen. He doesn't need much of an opening as he shows right there. He can score goals from anywhere. But look at Souza's hand. That's the second goal that he scored in the last game. Souza and Hadar are every bit as important as Krog is to that line. This line has tremendous chemistry. So, Brian, the time to talk is over. The puck drops here on ESPN. Coming up next, we crown a national champion. Here from Anaheim, either Maine or UNH, face-off is next. It's over.
I like web TV, because I can email pictures of the kids to my mom back in Iowa right through the television. That'll make her day. Of course, I don't have any kids of my own yet, so I'm going to use this phony television family to help me demonstrate. All right, people, smile. Now I'll send it to mom on her web TV. It'll freak her out. Dear mom, I'll explain later. Love, Tombo. Web TV service, the internet, television, and more. We've asked number three, four, and five hitters of a major league team to help us remember 10, 10, three, four, five long distance, where calls are always 10 cents a minute. I don't want to run your gig, but I don't bat. Dial 10, 10, three, four, five today. Centene Ice cools your breath twice. First, the cold minty shell chills you down. Then, the Sub-Zero flavor puts your breath on ice for a long, long time. Dentine Ice cools your breath twice. for today's world. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the NCAA Division I Hockey Championships is brought to you by Mailboxes Etc. Making business easier worldwide. And by Valvoline. You can always tell the guys who use Valvoline. Welcome back, everyone, to the pond in Anaheim. Well, many of you watching our national semifinal doubleheader on ESPN2 a couple of days back were wondering why at center ice and throughout the rink we see the University of Alaska Anchorage as our host school. Well, in the first Frozen Four west of the Rockies, UAA is hosting the event here. Is it close to Anaheim? Let's take a drive up the coast and find out exactly how far. If you were to drive it, it would take you 10 days. 76 hours, over 3,400 miles. Brian, is that you driving? Watch out there. All the way up to Anchorage, host of our event here, and they have done a fantastic job in making everyone feel very welcome. The UAA Seawolves, a powerhouse hockey team in the west and north. Driving like that only take you about 45 minutes to get there, Dave. <laughs> the Rose and the Korea line, along with Gustafson, will start. And at center ice, a quick shot coming from the blue line. Steve Correa told us he was angry yesterday, wanted to produce some more. Here's LaRose behind. The cage trying to go right in front for Gustafson. No points for the top line in their 2-1 sudden death overtime win against Boston College here on Thursday. A game you saw on ESPN2. Fifth head-to-head -head meeting this year, and here is Correa. Steve Correa across the line, had it chipped away at the last moment. And at center ice, it comes free. Here is Jason Krog, the Hobie Baker winner, his first shot. And Michaud covers up with a good save. The neutral zone will be really key in this game. How much room there is for the top lines in particular will mean an awful lot. Dick Umilia's group practiced really hard yesterday. I was a little bit surprised. A lot of speed, a lot of tempo, game situations, two-on-ones, and they're down low play inside their own zone and then the transitions to the breakouts. Those are the things that they're going to be looking to do here in this game here tonight. Their record and what got them here so far into this national championship, the first time they have ever been here. Great year for UNH. And that shot from Krog a few moments ago after the save from Alfie Misho, he was kind of driven into. And that was... Darren Hadar, the superstar freshman right winger for UNH, and he quickly is going to go to the box. So we are only 40 seconds into the first period, and we've got our first penalty. And it looks like he's a little shaken up, perhaps, as well. It'll be bad news for UNH if that is true. A little too much adrenaline, perhaps. Looks like it's going to be a roughing call, and that was well after the whistle. Elfie Misho had that puck well under control. Neither one of these teams wants to take too many penalties in a game like this with so much on the line. Well, John Walsh, the head coach of UMaine, saying yesterday after their press conference, staying out of the penalty box for Maine would be crucial. Let's see if the Black Bears can take advantage of the Wildcats' first time in the sin bin. Quick shot from Gustafson. Sharp angle on the near wing. And that's denied by Conklin. Korea tried to send that right on in a low slot, and it's knocked down by a high stick. 58 seconds into our first period. Still plenty of uh, power play time for Sean Walsh and the Maine Black Bears. 
Well, if Maine is going to be successful in this game, they're going to have to establish their physical play one-on-one. -on -one. They feel that they're physically stronger than all the other teams in this tournament. And down to this last game, they need to get some speed on the attack going through the neutral zone. We've seen Steve Correa already get a little bit of room. That's probably more than he got in the game prior to this. And their defensemen, when they're playing well, they are extremely aggressive in the neutral zone. They'll be taking shots at those UNH forwards as they come up the ice in between the center red line and their own blue line. Filipowicz helps clear down ice. Johnny Rogers and Jason Chapolsky are all over the main power play unit. This is Corey LaRose. He is part of that top line that was totally shut down against Boston College. They were smothered very well, and Steve Correa took personal offense to that. UNH is going to sit back a lot on their penalty killing. They'll have three guys back near their own blue line and a one four-checker, a very soft four-check. They don't want long passes. Sadowski, an intercept. He tries to throw right on net. They're going to try to force Maine, whoever has the puck and goes back behind their net to get it, to skate with it all the way up the ice and prevent those long passes. Remember in college hockey, you can pass them deep in your own zone all the way up to the far blue line. There are no two-line passes. Marcus Gustafson. On the far side for Cullen, and he'll head off on a change. Good hit early in the game. Christian Bragnala hitting his man, Peter Metcalf, into the near corner boards. That was quite a pop. This is going to be a physical game between two Hockey East rivals. They've already met four times this year. The series tied at 2 2. Trattney comes out to the far right point. A shot put on Cockle, a save, sprawling, a try on the move is denied somehow by Ty Cockle. What a try! Tremendous effort by Conklin without a stick. Somehow lunging and getting a piece. It was Barrett Heiston. It was to his right and robbed. Tratnik tries to hold it alive. Here is Metcalf. Streaking in front. It's chipped just wide. Main good pressure. And finally, UNH will clear. Penalty is coming up. Delay penalty call. We have a tripping minor, according to our referee, Mike Noth. Looks like it's Heiston going to the box for the University of Maine, so now the shoe will be on the other foot as UNH will go on the power play, but they very narrowly escaped disaster there. Ty Conklin, just an outstanding save. He's six feet tall, and he used every inch of it to make that save. He had lost his stick. Things were definitely out of control inside their own zone. A lot of bodies around. There goes the stick. Watch him dive back. Wow. He just barely got it. He was very lucky that it didn't go off the, the, the heel of his glove and into his net, looking like Dominic Hoschuk going around here. That was actually his stick hand that he used to block that puck from going into the net. Conklin felt like he didn't play his A game in the last game and felt fortunate that they won anyway. He's actually very good out of his net, but didn't handle the puck very well, and that's what upset him most about the semifinal game. Hockey East goalie of the year, and number four in the NCAA save percentage, second in goals against at 1.81 so a power play tried out for UNH off the tripping minor call by the way Heiston and Conklin speaking of Anchorage Alaska both Anchorage natives and they both come through early with spectacular plays of course Ty gets the better of Barrett along the end boards UNH tries to set up and watch for number 28 Jason Krog he had a power play goal the other night Darren Hadar out to Flipwitz on the move a shot and Alfie Michaud saw it all the way, was not screened, and makes a stop. Well, this is the big line for UNH. Krog, Souza, and Hadar move the puck extremely well. They can make it go, doesn't matter what the situation is they are faced with. Jason Krog was awarded the Hobie Baker Trophy as the top player in college sports, excuse me, in college hockey yesterday. And he's a very subdued young man. But boy, what a terrific hockey player. And there's Darren Hadar. A freshman on this line who has done just a terrific job to learn how to fit in with these experienced, talented guys on his line. Big game the other night against Michigan State. You saw it on ESPN2. He had two points, two assists. That ties UNH record, all-time freshman record for points in a season. Hadar is explosive, but Krog is the one that sets them all up. And some of the main players saying yesterday how important it is to shut down the line mates across the line. Here they come again. Krog on the ball, a shot. Michaud makes the save. Alfie Michaud on the nation's best player, Jason Krog. Now Hadar behind the goal line from a sharp angle outside the left circle, sets it up. Hadar gets the return feed. So a shot, rebound, Lewis, and Hadar directed it just wide. And look how quickly they were on it. They never give up on the play this line. Krog behind the cage, again setting up. Susan's right in front. Comes to Hadar on the move, and a shot, and another stop. Alfie Michaud feels it early. Great saves. 
pretty self-explanatory. The way we laid this game out, the top line of UNH against Alfie Misho. Alfie Misho is ahead so far, but if he's going to be inundated like this the entire game, it's going to be a long night for Alfie and the University of Maine. Krog, Souza, and Hadar move the puck around. They got too over-energetic against Krog in the middle. Krog is too smart for that. He throws the puck wide, and they get a free one coming in off the wing. Alfie Misho was very sharp. He told me yesterday that he feels that Krog's line is going to use the back of the net on him fairly often, too. And there he is, Krog moving out from behind. Another terrific setup by Hadar, and that one was labeled to the short side. Great work there by Alfie Misho. Misho does like to go down, and that's exactly what Jason Krog told us about yesterday. The UNH shooter is going to try to go top shelf, use the high part of the net in the corners in this game because of Misho's tendency to hit the ice early. That'll be a big key, plus how many rebounds he leaves. That's what Jason said. Try to get second shots. That'll be important as LaRose tips out of his own zone. Absolutely. He's a very acrobatic goaltender, but Misho does have a tendency to give up fat rebounds sometimes. And with these types of snipe snipers here, he would be in big trouble if he doesn't get help from his defense here tonight. Half a minute of power play time left here for UNH. Cullen gloves it down in his own circle, and he'll send it down. Cullen talking about Jason Krug said, hey, we've got to take away his stick and make sure we tie him up and at the red line stand him up and disallow him to find those great line mates he does so well with. Johnny Rogers helps poke it into the offensive zone. Final seconds of the power play. Rogers was tripped up, and Cullen, who sees a lot of ice time, outlets for Tratney. Heiston is out of the box. Barrett gets the feed, tries to tee it up in between the circles, and couldn't quite find the handle. Trapolsky had the game-winning goal in their contest against Michigan State. Puck crosses the line. No touch-up needed in the college game, and icing is the call. Jason Krug, the Hobie Baker Award winner of the nation's best testing made early. Welcome to My Mailboxes, etc. This is a full-service copy center. Need thousands of copies? No problem. We do it all, from start to finish. All you have to do is drop it off here. We'll take care of the rest. Say you have a big proposal. We'll color copy it, bind it, and you're on your way. Presentations, calendars, brochures, menus, we'll even laminate. All with a personal touch. Can your copy store do that? Mailboxes, etc. We're making business easier. We're making life easier. He's a smooth ladies' man with one thing on his mind. Mm -hmm. He's a nacho loving fool. Don't stand between the man and his nachos. Oh, yeah. Fungalicious. Right now at Taco Bell, big bad nachos, Bell Grande, only 99 cents when you buy a large drink. That's over a buck off, dig? Nacho. UMaine goalie Alfie Misho in their game Thursday against Boston College. 35 saves, 36 shots. He had 16 stops in the second period, and BC had all those power play tries. Four power play attempts. They only scored one time on him. A tremendous year for Alfie Misho, single-handedly keeping them in that game against the Eagles. Real laid-back kid, isn't he? We had a good chat with him yesterday. He says, I remember every goal that UNH has scored against me this year. These two teams have played each other four times. They were two and two, their records. Alfie said five power play goals went in against them. He means to shut these guys down any way possible here tonight. Runners Lundback, A.J. Begg are paired together in the blue line here for Sean Walsh. Ben Gite, Nico Dimitrakos, and Dan Kerluck. Very effective line in a victory over BC. 2-1 on Thursday. Sudden death OT. Game winner scored by Bobby Stewart. Team is without Brendan Walsh in their lineup. One of their best defensive forwards. He badly re-injured a leg problem they had prior in the season. He actually cracked a kneecap early in the year. That blast was sent wide. And re-injured it the other day. So he is out, and that means Bobby Stewart has got to change around. He will now play center, and Mark Magnus Lundback is in for him. Yeah, that's unfortunate uh, for Brendan Walsh. He's a big part of their team that cracked kneecap, but unable to play in this final. Very disappointing for him. Whistle stops play. 14.03 to go here in our first period. How excited are fans back in Durham, New Hampshire? Well, on Thursday night, they had a big bonfire on the main street. They had to shut the street down. 
and a couple of frat houses used projection TVs and projected the game onto the outside of the frat house. I am <laughs> loving that. That is just outstanding. Way to go, guys. Dave, I could just imagine passing motorists saying, Hey, Harry, look at that. They definitely get ESPN, too, at that house. <laughs> It brings a whole new meaning to the phrase, Jason York really went upstairs on the goaltender that time. Boy, you had that one ready, didn't you? <laughs> but the, no. the atmosphere and the intensity is fantastic. Oh, yeah. We have pep bands here in the stands at the pond. The fans have been just tremendous with all the excitement surrounding the game. And UNH sent a lot of people here across the country. Each campus more than 3,000 miles from the pond here in Anaheim and a large contingent more than 8% of the fans in that second game we saw UNH Michigan State were from New Hampshire cheering on the Wildcats. Trapolsky, the sixth game winner. He's number 10. Half the game winner against Michigan State and a beautiful feed from Jason Frog. Heiston tries to catch up with it at center ice. Can't quite find the handle. And Michael Sousa moves that back to Filippowicz. Tries to find Frog on the move. Here's Doug Janik. Freshman defenseman and national team member from one of the U.S. developmental teams. Very talented young player. Also can contribute on offense for UMaine. Now quickly across the line again, Sousa. He's got the size as well. He was tremendous in the victory over Michigan State here on Thursday. Two goals, two assists, four points. He had a great game. This line is good down low or on the rush. Brock for Sousa. Comes right to Steve O'Brien, the co-captain, senior defenseman. Down low, Sousa tries to tuck it in short side. And Misho is up to the task for a save after the play. Hadar is dumped out of the ice in front of the UMaine crease. 12.47 to go here in the first period. Sean Walsh has won a national title before. He wants his second here tonight. So, Mike, what got you into this guitar? Well, you know, I thought about getting another Mercedes, but... Uh... Good luck, gentlemen. The way this handles. The traction control's phenomenal. Really? It's got more horsepower than a C280. No kidding. I kid you not. So I thought, eh, why not do something different for a change? Different? There's an idea. It's Arrow. Think Zig. We've been watching you. Every time you move. Every time you bend. Every time you breathe. That's how we got to be the best, most advanced sports nutrition company in the world. Twin Lab, we can't stop thinking about your body. Visit GNC today to get 20% off all Twin Lab sports nutrition and enter the Power Trip sweepstakes to win a Corvette, Harley, or thousands of other great prizes. Welcome back, everyone, to Southern California. Last time two Hockey East rivals played the NCAA championship game, 1995, where UMaine was there but lost to the Terriers of Boston University by a 6-2 final. And Sean Walsh, although his players on this current UMaine team weren't there, remembers it very well and all week long has been talking about the jubilation of winning in 93, what the faces were like, Gar Snow winning a championship, and then not winning in 95, how difficult that was to take. And I, Alfie Nisho brought it up again. It obviously had a really big impact on him. It was a smart move by Sean Walsh. The impact, the, the picture worth a thousand words kind of thing, really hit home with his players. Two top lines go head to head again. This is what it's all about. Flip which sends it right on, deflected just wide. Nisho had a piece of it. In front, they go for Sousa. Just beyond his reach, good feed from Steve O'Brien and a whistle in front of the net. And they've got a call here from Mike Noth, our referee. They'll sort things out here with 12.35 to go here in the first. NHL action comes your way, ESPN's National Hockey Night. Pittsburgh Penguins led by Yarmo Yager and the Philadelphia Flyers without Eric Lindros. A collapsed lung suffered the other night in the game against the Nashville Predators. We'll see how the Flyers and John McClare will rebound. For more, log on to ESPN.com. A part of the Go Network, Go.com. Lindros, his regular season is over. Wow. With a tremendous 93 points. And hopefully for Eric in the NHL, the playoffs, he is available for the postseason. Oh, no kidding. I mean, the playoffs, you want all the great stars playing on every team. You'd like every team to be as healthy as possible going in, and we hope that everything works out well for Eric Lindros and the Philadelphia Flyers. And Eric's not the only one hurt right now either, unfortunately. Here's Eric Lind. He's a sophomore from Stanford, Connecticut. Number five handling. John Sadowski, Chad on a freight truck, and Matt Jedjashitsky. That's the line here for UNA. Jedjashitsky spins around. In front, they go three chairs on a freight truck. Is denied by Alfie Michaud. Are 
you kidding? Sadowski was actually the one on the doorstep on a great feed for the point, and it was shut down by Michaud. You, University of Maine's running around inside their own zone, and UNH has really got their offensive game going. They're turning pucks over, and it's ending up on a white stick every time. Can you believe that save? John Sadowski of UNH had a terrific game in the semifinals. I thought he was a real sleeper who did a great job at every aspect of the game, defensively and offensively. He thought he had a goal there, Alfie Michaud. That, lay, that arm, rather, came out about four inches longer than I expected, Sadowski thought. Now, here's one of the plays that they've used against Michaud. Well, we'll see, take a look at it later. They want to work from behind him out to the edge of the post. We'll see that in a moment. Rogers takes the draw. He and C.J. Fisick out with Jason Shapolsky here. Comes to the low slot. Well, Sadowski wide open in front. Tremendous chance. Shapolsky will leave back for Mark White in the far corner. Stripped away and stolen. Good play defensively by Dan Perluck. In front, they go to Chan. Gite was set up. Back check, though, from Fisick. And Gite was loose. Dimitrakos tries to flip in front. He and Gite had tremendous semifinal games. Gite crushes his man. Good hard hit. Dan Enders got sent down into the far corner. Remain cycling the offensive zone, trying to create some more chances here. And Kerlock, Gite, and Dimitrakos were very effective against the Spartans. Gite had a beautiful feed to Dimitrakos for the game tying goal. And then it was Dimitrakos with a tremendous setup of his own for the game winner. Now the offensive end, LaRose. Gosses and tries a backhander, couldn't take it up. Didn't get good with to it. Comes to Doug Janik, looking to feed it front, knocked down by LaRose into the corner. Gosses in along the end boards, tries to play it. And now you give him too much room, he'll burn you. Here's Jason Croft, the nation's best. On the move, Hayden, quick shot, save made by Michaud. Comes out to the point. Jamie Felkowski throws it right on, deflected wide. And it comes away to LaRose, the top line's out there again. Yes, it's free, oh, Korea was ahead of the pack. He was onside. There's no red line in the college game. Two line passes are allowed, and Steve Korea was there by a stride. And the shift for Croft. And the play is whistled down, 10-21 to go here in the period and some of the rough stuff after the whistle. That's where we see it at the collegiate level, especially on offside calls. And I think and we're going to get a penalty here. Right, Mike Noth, the referee, has got a call. Robert Eck, I think, is the man going to go to the penalty box for roughing. It was after the play. These are the types of penalties that Maine has to stay away from because of the ability of UNH on the power play. The whistle had already gone. That's why Jason Frog was sort of just standing there. I think Frog made that one look good because it's the smart thing to do. Eck wanted to give him a little extra shot there. Earlier we spoke of the fact that Alfie Michaud, the main goaltender, says he knows that UNH wants to work from behind him because it's difficult for a goaltender to do. Jason Krog or anybody else will try and get back there. So you can see the play will develop here, and then they'll use what they, what Maine refers to as the Shanny post, in reference to Brendan Shanahan of Detroit Red Wings, who likes to hang off to the side. Look at Krog, Sousa moves to the front, and watch Haydar will come in off to the side and try to go short side. That's what they call Shanny post, from there right into the edge of the net. Alfie Michaud has done his homework, and he's been flawless so far. So again, Alfie Michaud, the UMaine goalie, will be tested by the fifth-ranked power play unit in the NCAA from UNH. Number one this year was Michigan State, knocked out by these Wildcats. Against the Spartans, one out of three with a man advantage on Thursday, and the one goal was scored by Jason Crone. What I liked about that last sequence, Dave, is that UNH had some great scoring chances. Michaud makes big saves for Maine. Maine comes right back, and you see Korea trying to bust up the gut for a breakaway. UNH can get thinking too much about offense and get sloppy defensively. They have to be prepared for plays like that from Korea. Here's Chad on a break shot. Cross ice. Jed Jashitsky will send that in, and Alfie Michaud waits a bit too long, almost got himself in big trouble. Jed Jashitsky is dumped down by Peter Metcalf behind the net. Sapolsky sends it to the near corner. Sadowski had a piece of that. Sent right in front, cut loose. A whack out of two for tries. Sapolsky had set himself up right in front. Now it's loose the other way. Humane looks to dance out. Short handed, trying to create, at least cause some problems and kill some more power play times. Jim Ledger. Great work there by, by Bragnello. A one on one situation. Ledger trying to protect the puck, backing into him. Bragnello with the ball away, just eliminated him. Bobby Stewart hit hard, and a penalty is coming up on Bragnello. Who checked Bobby Stewart. He had the game winner 
against Boston College. A sudden death OT on Thursday. Our first Frozen Four game. And Stewart is hurt. That's not good for Maine. He is replacing an injured player already. This may be a boarding call. We'll see what the final call is. Stewart very slow, as you can see, to get up. Ragnallo, who had just made the good play defensively, as they pointed out, pops Stewart a little too hard from behind. Here's Michaud with the big saves, doing a great job at his end of the ice. And in defense, at the other end of the ice for UNH, this is Ledger trying to back in and stay under control. That's Ragnallo. That's terrific. Yurk and Conklin, Conklin, the goaltender, able to clear the puck. This is Stewart operating in the zone, and that is the Christian Bregnano hit. And we saw a moment ago, and Bobby Still is not up. Bregnano to the box, boarding minor at 10:34. You know, in all honesty, there, it, I think it's Stewart that put himself in that position. Bregnano was finishing the check; he was pursuing him and was going to finish it. When Stewart changed his direction and tried to cut back, he got whacked pretty hard, and it's unfortunate, certainly, that he is hurt. But uh, I saw it a little bit differently, I guess, than the referee did. Stewart is up on hands and knees now. That is a good sign. If Sean Walsh is forced to change his lineup around again, the other day he went to A.J. Begg, a defenseman, and moved him up to the forward spot. We'll sort it out when we come back to Anaheim. Do you know what it takes to build a career in Maine? Eastern Maine Technical College does. At Eastern Maine Technical College, you will gain the critical skills demanded by Maine employers. Eastern Maine Technical College offers full and part-time programs, day and evening in Bangor, and at outreach centers located in Belfast, Ellsworth, and East Millinocket. Eastern Maine Technical College, building a stronger Maine, one student at a time. For more information, call 941-4600. seeking ground superiority. Test drive for yourself the Saab value at Village Car Company, Hogan Road, Bangor. Here's a look at the last play where Bobby Stewart got injured. This is where he tried to cut back and where Bragnello came across and finished off the play. He did hit him pretty hard and it was from behind. That's what drew the penalty and got the referee's attention. Three big goals in the postseason for Bobby Stewart. His coach, Sean Walsh, calls him Mr. March because he comes through. He had that enormous game winner the other night to send him into the national championship game. So hopefully for you, Maine, he is able to stay in the lineup. That would be a disastrous loss. 53 more seconds. We are four on four, and then a power play after that. He'll come up for you, Maine. Watch out for Susan. And Krog on the line again here on this four-on-four -four situation for the next 38 seconds. We've had a lot of ice time already, haven't they? We've seen the 28, 20, and 7 out there whenever possible, it seems. Scoring chances. New Hampshire looking good. Maine has not had a lot of pressure at all so far. Conklin slipped just wide, and a delay penalty is coming up again. Good effort in the offensive end by Anders Lundback, who drove all the way down ice. And a cross-checking minor from Mike Noth. Our uh, referee. And yeah, this time it's Sousa going to the penalty box. So now a big situation in favor of the University of Maine. In 25 seconds, it will become a five-on-three. And the faceoff is down in the University of Maine's end zone. Excuse me, UNH's end zone. So faceoff will be very important here. John Wall said to us yesterday, we have absolutely got to stay out of the penalty box and keep our heads in terms of the bad penalties that can really kill you. Dickie Millie's team is in a huge hole now. Someone trying to break the ice. Scoring chances have been in favor of UNH so far in this game. They created some pretty good stuff. Alfie Micho has bailed out University of Maine again time after time. Now is a very important point in this third period, and perhaps we'll look back at the hockey game and say it was huge all the way around. Four on three, and then it'll be a five on three here for Maine. 25 seconds of a four on three. Korea out there along with Ite, LaRose, and Cullen. Face-off is won by Umaine. This is David Cullen. Cross-size play. LaRose ripped it just wide. He's got a heavy shot from outside the circle. Steve Korea. Steve Korea, the right-hander, will play on the left wing here. 
loves to camp out in that left circle. It's poked away. Good defensive play. On a break, Chuck will send it all the way down ice. They'll be looking for Steve Correa because he's so good at moving in from the face-off circle on the left side, going to the net. They set up for him. He's perfect timing on rebounds. They will shoot from everywhere here, looking for Korea to get the stuff around the net. It's a five on three, and it's poked away. Great defensive effort again. Steve O'Brien, the co-captain for UNH. The Rose tries to hold it in. O'Brien absolutely crushes it. Feed it to Lee inside the circle. Couldn't pull the trigger. Cullen keeps it alive. Slap shot. Set by the rebound. No ski tag. Couldn't find the handle. Filipowicz tries to clear. Out to the left point. Cullen cross ice. The Rose on the move. A big try. Stop the stick play from Conklin behind the net. Again, Umain sets up. Charging right in and set just wide. Another good opportunity for Umain. Demi Trocos that time. Corey LaRose sends down low. Demi Trocos tried the backdoor cut. And Steve O'Brien clears the zone. UNH just barely clears it this time. When you're five on three short, you have to. If you get a chance to touch the puck, you have to get it out of the zone. They did not the first time, and it almost cost them. One penalty clears. Five on four for the next 31 seconds. Matias Tretney tries to get the return pass. He will. Looks the fire he on it. The Rose at the point. Good play to keep it alive for Cullen. Sends it cross ice looking for Tretnik. Couldn't find the handle. The Rose had a good left by Dragnello. And Christian clears the ice. Good job there by the UNH defenders. Maine had a couple of chances to move the puck around the outside and get those defenders moving a little bit more. They tried to go against the grain and lost possession. Metcalf for Gustafson on the move. A snapshot inside the circle. Conklin a great save. Marcus Gustafson had some heat on that snapshot. And the penalty is clear. They kill a four on three and a five on three. And UNH sends down. Janik for Metcalf. No one home cross ice. Comes to the center of the ice for Heiston. And we've got an interference call again from Mike No with 6.30 to go here in the opening period. Another power play on the way. Well, I think it's going to be an interference call against the University of Maine. A huge penalty kill by UNH. Now momentum will be very important. What you do after a situation like this, there is the interference call on Vitorino. But UNH killing that off. Now, which team will come forth? UNH obviously has a chance to go on the power play here, so it gives them a big advantage, and you know the big line is coming up. Great work there, walking out of the corner there by Demi Trakos, who was a really skilled freshman for the University of Maine. I really like the job that he did in the semifinal game as well. He talked to us yesterday about growing up in Massachusetts and what this national championship game means. He grew up watching Jack Parker's BU teams in BC, of course, Harvard, all the great... Boston area teams, and now to be here in the national championship game, just a freshman means so much to him, and Darren Hadar handles right there at the other end of it. Some young talent out here, and especially for you, May, and they are relying on Peter Metcalf, Doug Janik, Barrett Heiston, and Demi Trakos, all rookies in the biggest game of their lives without question. May tries to bring it out now. They are down a man on the interference minor. Against Vitorino. Here's Robert Eck. The big Swedish defenseman. He's 6'5", almost 220 pounds, and really can carry a load when he puts a hit on someone. Frog at center ice. A magician with a puck, as we saw. Here's Hadar. He's got Krog streaking toward the net. There and Hadar, the freshman. Frog behind the goal. It's the setup. He's got Sousa there. He is parked to the right. Of Misha. Set right on Hadar poke at it. Jamie Filipowicz, it comes for Hadar along the goal line, on the move. He's right for O'Brien. Trapnik tries to clear. Collected just wide by Hadar again. And finally, Umain able to clear it down ice. you really got to love the decisions that the big line for UNH makes with the puck, whether on the power play or even strength. Just terrific stuff. Looking around always, getting it to the proper guy almost every time. Good intercept made by Peter Metcalf, and he is free. Just outside the left circle by O'Brien. And we're going to have a hooking call coming up on Steve O'Brien. You know, UNH did not get much going on the power play as Mike Noth, our head referee, has been a busy guy here in the first period. We'll be four on four for the next 37 seconds. NHL, let's talk about it as well.
on ESPN2. The playoff stretch drive is heating up, and the news is there to bring you the best games. Tuesday at 7, the New Jersey Devils take on the Carolina Hurricanes. Devils need the Atlantic Division with 91 points. The Canes lead Florida by 6 points, trying to win the Southeast Division and, of course, make the playoffs. Then on Wednesday, it is Boston and the Florida Panthers. Panthers battling for that playoff spot. For more, log on to ESPN.com, part of the Go Network, Go.com. Another penalty call. I guess it was Art Sadowski coming, trying to reach from behind. He pulled, he pulled on Metcalf from the side, and there goes the referee's arm. So a four-on-four four for the next 37 seconds. We see plenty of that in the last few games here in Anaheim. Four-on-four four tries were first four-on-three with a couple penalties. Remember, UNH plays on the big sheet back home. In Durham, they play an Olympic-sized rink with a lot of skating room, so we'll see the four-on-four. Four. That may help them a bit. They've got a lot of very guys who are fleet of foot. Here's Jim Ledger across the line himself, trying to get around his man, Ledger. Looks for the wraparound try. Conklin got a piece of it. Ledger lost his stick. Conklin did a real nice job there. He knew the wraparound was coming. He could smell that he got across there early and took away everything low. Rogers giving chase into the near corner. And Shapolsky trying to win the puck back. Power play try now here for Umaine, a five-on-four. Shift away into the near corner. Line change, and again on the move. Vitorino charging in, and they score! Maggie Tay knocks it in! Power play goal for the Black Bears, and they've drawn first blood in the national championship. Maggie Tay from Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Rebound was the story here, and UNH unable to get to it. Ben Gite, who was terrific in his last game, the semifinals, went to the net hard all night, two nights ago. Does it again here. The rebound comes out, and he cashes in. UNH players are looking at the puck carrier going wide, and they don't pay attention to Gite, Gite going to the net. Vitorino is a man who simply threw it to the net. Coaches will tell you, without the puck, go to the net. Good things will happen. Can't get any better than that. 12th of the year for Ben Gitte, the junior winger, who also has played center ice at 15:47, a power play talent. And I think it's his line that may be the key to success if they're going to have it here for the University of Men. Maine. Ben Gitte in the center, Kerlick on the left, and Dimitrakos most often on the right. They are an excellent line that did a lot of damage in their last game. The top line with Korea, LaRose, and Gustafson gets most of the attention. Gitte's line follows up well. And there is Michael Eisner, the chairman of the Walt Disney Company, a huge hockey fan. His son, a goalie for the University of Denver, and they're in the NCAAs as well, enjoying the great college pucks here tonight. Oh, they have been record. outstanding when they're scoring first, and the power play goal, Brian's got to give them a lot of boost as well. It had really been in a slump 0 for 7 in their victory in the semifinals against Boston College. So Sean Walsh, who talked so much yesterday in the press conference and with us afterwards, about special teams he did and he was he's been very businesslike all the way along here ever since they came here to anaheim sean walsh has been very businesslike wanted his team to focus on just what's happening on the ice trying to keep his club with their vision for and keep it away from all the extraneous things that happen environment is so important in college sports these young men are playing in different buildings different environments they've never been in before makes it very difficult difficult indeed Gite's goal from Jason Vitorino. Dan Kerluck assists the power play tally at 15:47. Steve Correa, the superstar winger for Maine, talks about the significance of winning an NCAA title. This has been uh, my goal ever since I came to the University of Maine, and you know all I want to do is uh, to bring a national championship back there. And uh, unfortunately, it's going to be my only opportunity, uh, you know, getting it, you know to the finals in my last year. But uh, you know, we're going to go out and try to make the most of it. And uh, like I said, I think our guys are ready. Ready indeed with a one nothing lead. And LaRose was set up there from Gustafson a moment ago. Almost made it 2 nothing. Eric Lynn's shot from the right point goes wide. Souza will follow up. Dick Humili wanted to get out to a lead. He said that was crucial in a game like this with a pressure on. In front, Souza trying to redirect. Hadar regains. Look at a stuff in short side. Stop by Misha again. And a whistle will stop play. Lots of contact in the low slot. Janik was dumped by Bragnello. Lots of hits, lots of saves, and a humane goal. 
so far in our first period. Exciting action from Anaheim. More on the way here on ESPN. Before you can throw like an MVP, catch like an all-star, or hit like a Hall of Famer, you'll have to work like a Gabe Kapler. K-Swiss. McDonald's will give you a spectacular home theater from Best Buy. What you do with it is up to you. The excitement of the Monopoly game is back at McDonald's. Just buy America's favorite fries and play for a chance to win millions of prizes, including a home theater system from Best Buy. Where can you go to play the Monopoly game today? Did somebody say McDonald's? First time in 15 years, three teams from the Hockey East made it to the Frozen Four. Two remain here in Anaheim tonight. UNH and UMaine, the Black Bears and the Wildcats, and Maine draws first blood. Ben Gite slapping in a rebound goal as he crashed that. We saw him make a couple of beautiful acrobatic plays in the semifinals, almost scored in yeah. a similar fashion here tonight. Absolutely, in a kind of typical Maine fashion way it's gone. El Pimicho giving him chance after chance. Okay, guys, you got another chance, you got, got another chance. Get down and score one, and they did. A blast from the point as Gite takes the draw. Came off the stick of Jamie Filippowicz. Well, center ice. Dimi Trakos tries to send that in. Intercept by Filippowicz. Dimi Trakos lost the handle briefly. And Kerr look out there. Plenty of physical play as Chad on a freight shot. Smother and steamrolled. Long back hit him hard. Dimi Trakos wins the puck along the far wall. And it's sent it all the way down ice. If it crosses the line, doesn't quite. Ryan's got to play it. Would have been an icing call. Steve O'Brien to center ice. Again, the two-line pass is allowed in this college game. That is an icing. We have 2.51 to go here in our exciting first period from the pond. Coming up after the first period, we'll have ESPN News and the Taco Bell Intermission Report. Plenty of stories to talk about, of course. College hockey, the NHL, Major League Baseball starting up in a couple of days. Opening day is Monday. Well, the University of Maine feel pretty good about themselves. They know their goaltender is on his A game. Alfie Misho was the guy that pretty much single-handedly got them to this point by his incredible acrobatics in the semifinal round and early stages of this first period as well has given them every chance to get going in this game, and now they're up 1-0. Fourth time. Two teams from New England have made it this far. Quick shot. Gutsison on his knees off the faceoff. Sent a whistler right at Ty Conklin who made the stop. Polsky couldn't handle it. Here's Christian Brognalo. Laid there by Cullen. Spins away from trouble. C.J. Fisick on forecheck was all over. New Hampshire and their coach, Dick Camille, like to play a very aggressive style, especially through the neutral zone. Try to create a lot of turnovers and use their speed to wheel it up ice. And the puck has been in the middle of the ice a lot more in this game than the last game that Maine played. I mean, they played their first game as the one before the Across the line, Gustafson fired. He had a man wide open, two in the rows. Correa sends it down low. Sticked along the end board by Conklin and Bregnalo. In the near corner, sends up ice for Hadar. Here's Croc. A two-on-one chance to get away. Jason Croc shoots. Rebound is loose. And Hadar directed it just wide. Croc the rebound. Tries to slip that down low again for Hadar. Steve O'Brien sends it around the board. Souza on a flip of backhand pass. But Corey LaRose makes the intercept. Player dumped down the ice, no call though from Mike Noel. And Steve Correa will flip it in. Marcus Gustafson has had some terrific chances for Maine so far and has not been able to cash in. A takeaway, and in front they go, and another call. It's going to be a half pass call. And then his call against Humane in the offensive zone, and that is an infraction that it'll send the face off down. Ice with 134 to go in the opening period. Marcus Gutherson had a great chance for University of Maine, and then in typical UNH fashion, New Hampshire came back the other way with the big line with Frog, Souza, and Hadar, and the defense for Maine got caught. Number four, Peter Metcalf, the bottom of your screen, was watching the play. Look at that, a three-on-one. That's how quickly it happens, and that's Krog, the guy that really don't want to have the puck. Tried to go five-hole. 
on Alfie Michaud. Definitely did. Alfie sliding across. Very acrobatic goaltender, as I mentioned earlier before. And this kid has just been fantastic in these playoffs. Marcus Lundback is filling in for the injured Brendan Walsh. Walsh is on the UMaine bench, by the way, because as Coach John Walsh says, such an important part of the program, he couldn't possibly miss it. On a freight truck in the corner, Janik tries to head him off for the pass. Chad on a freight truck, and Sadowski will battle there. Robert Eck all over John Sadowski. Buck loose comes into the near corner. O'Brien tries to hold it in. Steve O'Brien and David Cohen, two superstar defensemen who get a lot of ice time. On the move, a shot deflected over the boards and out of play off the stick of Bobby Stewart from Umaine. Alfie Michaud has had a lot of help from his assistant coach, Grant Stanbrook, over the course of his career. He is a junior now. They work on the word CAP, C-A-P, compact, aggressive, and patient. And Grant Stanbrook, his coach, says, if you do all those things, I will tip my cap to you after the game. And he has done them extremely well. Earlier in his career, he used to flop a lot. He said he loved Felix Potvin, and he used to be aggressive, but he'd stay back in his neck. Stanbrook has worked with him to move out and be aggressive. And he's also worked on that glove hand. He used to hold it too low, almost behind his leg sometimes. I'll tell you, he learned his lesson, because against Boston College, he made some tremendous glove saves. T.S. Tratnik pays for his troubles along the near wall. Bragnalo tries to clear. Now, Camisho telling us yesterday he really tried to model himself after Colorado future Hall of Famer Patrick Waugh. As we have a whistle, the play is whistled down offside. Because of the way Patrick Waugh not only plays the angles as well as anyone in the game ever has, but also the way he studies tape and looks at shooters and yeah. really knows and memorizes their tendencies. Exactly. As I was saying earlier, he remembers every game that UNH, uh, every goal rather, that UNH has scored against them this year. That's really something. Tratnik will take the draw at center ice. Along with Jason Crawl. UNH tries to move it up by down by one. Final 30 seconds here in the opening frame for the pond. Here's Bragnalo in the neutral zone. And he'll throw it all the way down low. Comes away to Metcalf who lost the handle. Briefly caught, almost made the pay. He hits Sousa. Oh, so good on four check there. Now a high stick is being called penalty by our referee Mike No. Tratnig is going to be the guilty party. High sticking minor at least two minutes for Matthias Tratnig with 10.9 seconds left in the first. So power play time here at the end of the first period and the beginning of period number two. And this is away from the play again. These are the types of penalties that Maine is susceptible to take sometimes. And this again, not a good situation. John Walsh cannot be happy about this. It was either against Haydar or Krog away from the play after the puck had gone. Gets the stick up a little bit. Again, Krog pretty good to draw notice to it. And Trotnick very upset with the referee for getting nailed, but still a power play for UNH to end this period. Well, Sean Walsh and UMaine has got to face Jason Krog, senior center, co-captain, already four power plays. And this will be another attempt for UNH as they've so far fired blanks. But Krog, the Hobie Baker winner, as we talked about, number one in the nation, points per game. Five-time Hockey East Player of the Week this year and a free agent in terms of his NHL status. I think somehow after the great performance this year, and of course, the Hobie Baker Award oh, is yeah. going to be high on a lot of people's lists. Yeah. And he has tremendous skill and strength, too. Souza off the draw, tries a quick shot, and Misha was there to smother it. Well, these two teams don't like each other one little bit. There's been a lot of stuff going on already. You've got to love it. The emotion in a championship game like this, winner take all, has just been terrific right from the drop of the puck. We're seeing all the action that we had hoped for. And this line again of Frog, Souza, and Hadar really smart at every facet of the game. Souza got a great shot right off that last faceoff. Frog will take a big draw here with Corey LaRose to the left of Michaud. Comes loose for Souza, couldn't handle it. O'Brien can't run it down. Looks up at the clock. Final seconds of our opening period. And after the play, some of the rough stuff again with Metcalf. And Hadar, as they exchange unpleasantries in the near corner, but no further call, at least for now, from our referee, Mike Nolte. Ben Gite and Umaine will face a minute 49 of power play time for UNH in the second period. ESPN News is next with the Taco Bell Intermission Report right after this. Richard began to lose control in the summer of 96. We didn't know what to think. He needed help. 
Richard was out of control. Our new Toro personal pace mower could help. It's our most advanced self-propelled mower, extremely responsive to the touch, allowing him superior control. We know there are more like Richard. Thanks to Toro, there's hope. Other innovative Toro products are the preferred choice at Pinehurst, site of the 1999 U.S. Open. We mill wheat into flour, process and refine oil seeds in Mexico, produce sweeteners from corn in the U.S., Brazil, and Europe. You see this? And operate 19 meat processing facilities in North America. Yep, and look what they did with it. Where these days, there's some good news for everyone. Cargill. It's not just what we do, it's how we do it. With Transamerica Life Insurance and your estate plan, you can be sure your money will go where you want it to go. The people in the pyramid working for you. At Transamerica, we have insurance products and investments for retirement that'll help you plan for your next career. The people in the pyramid, working for you. After 1999, there will not be any more sports in this century. So be sure you get the best of it. Call for ESPN The Magazine now. ESPN The Magazine is big, bigger in size, with unbelievable photos, interviews that'll surprise you, and your favorite ESPN personalities in every issue. Subscribe now. Get 26 issues a year's worth for just a dollar an issue. And better yet, you'll get this official ESPN The Magazine polo shirt absolutely free. So call now. A great tradition reborn on ESPN2. First, the undefeated heavyweight C.C. Salif in a four-round bout. Then the main event, Vinny the Pasmanian Devil Pazienza takes on Joseph Juanuka. Friday Night Fights, Friday at 9 on ESPN2. From the worldwide leader in sports, this is ESPN News. And hi, everybody. Brian Kenny here in the ESPN Newsroom. A quick update for you before we send you back to the second period of the NCAA championship game. First up, an update from one of the biggest stars in the NHL. Well, the Philadelphia Flyers still reeling from the devastating news on Eric Lindros. Lindros, diagnosed with a collapsed lung, will miss the rest of the regular season at least, and probably more. The All-Star Center is still in a Nashville hospital. He'll be there until at least Tuesday. But Flyers coach Roger Nielsen says there are a number of reasons to be thankful. I think it was scary to the whole team when they found out, not just because it was Eric, any, any member of your team. And uh, <clears throat> a collapsed lung sounds pretty serious. And I think it was lucky, too. That it was, I think it was the first time all year we didn't fly out after the game. We decided to, because it was so far to Boston from Nashville, that we'd, we'd hang over and go in the morning. And, uh, you know, had we been up in the air, that could have been even more problems for him. But... There's good news today. They, uh, uh, the doctors feel that uh, he's on the road to recovery. His, uh, they filled his uh, lungs with air now, and it's just a matter of getting his blood count back up. And uh, so there's a good chance he will be ready in a couple of weeks for the playoffs. That'll be a remarkable recovery. Flyers playing today without Lindros, Leclerc, and Mark Recchi taking on the Bruins, and Byron Defoe making things tougher. Making a save there on Rob Brindamore. It'd be tough all game later in the first scoreless game. Sergei Samsonov beats John Van Beesbrook. His 23rd of the season, Bruins up one zip. Third period now, Flyers down 3-0, and they don't need this either. Steve Duchesne rammed into the boards by Jason Allison. Duchesne would leave the game, and well, the Flyers lose this one 3-0. Byron Defoe with his ninth shutout this season. He stopped 24 shots. The win boosting the Bruins into a tie with Buffalo for the seventh spot in the NHL Eastern Conference. Devils and Penguins. A little more hockey. Second period scoreless. Devils coming in. Jason Arnett here. Stopped by Jean Sebastian Aubon, but Arnett on the rebound. His fifth. One nothing. Devils up on top. Still in the second. Two one. Devils. Aubon is there, and again, beautiful save. He had 29 saves in the first two periods. Later, here's Yarmir Yager. Watch this closely. One hand. Ah, got it. Beating Chris Terreri. Three two. Devils. Later in the third, still three two. Penguins trying to clear, but no, Dave Andrzejczyk coming in. Hey, shoot, they score. Second of the game, 14th of the season. Devils beat the Penguins 4-2. Devils out shooting the Penguins 40-18. to Yager with his 40th goal of the season, but Pittsburgh hasn't won in its last six. New Jersey now just two points behind Ottawa for the number one spot in the Eastern Conference.
Stars and Blues, the return of Brett Hull. They're having some problems there. Look at this. They did broke it. <laughs> Still put some tape up there. Nothing but the best for these guys. Four on four in the second period. Here's Hull. Brett Hull against Grant Fuhr. Hull. Hey, shoot these cars. Fuhr say, what happened? Tied up 1-1. Hull's 29. Third period. Blues up on top. 3-2. Pavel Dimitra already with a goal. Comes up. Dimitra in and nicely done. Got through. Pavel Dimitra, two goals, two assists. Blues take it 5-2. Brett Hull's first visit to St. Louis. Since leaving the Blues for Dallas, he was greeted by a mix of boos and cheers from the sellout crowd. Dallas still needs six more points to clinch the President's Cup. Goes to the team with the best record in the NHL regular season. Taking a quick break right here. Maine leading New Hampshire in the NCAA championship game. A little hoop and we'll get you back out to Anaheim. We're back right after this. He's a smooth ladies' man with one thing on his mind. Nacho! Mm-hmm. He's a nacho-loving fool. Don't stand between the man and his nachos. Nacho! Oh, yeah. Fungalicious. Right now at Taco Bell, Big Bad Nachos Bell Grande, only 99 cents when you buy a large drink. That's over a buck off, dig? Nacho! Whether you're working out, Working hard or making changes, one thing is for certain. Centrum has your nutrition needs covered. With Centrum, you benefit from what science is discovering about how vitamins and minerals help maintain health, unlock energy, and strengthen immunity. Centrum, always complete from A to Zinc. And Centrum Kids' great new taste is making a splash with new fruit flavors kids love. If you or someone you know is missing a TV show, then you need web TV. Just type in a program or celebrity, and your search begins. Once your program has been located, you'll be immediately notified on your television. Then web TV can automatically set your VCR for viewing at a later time or date. Web TV service, the internet, television, and more. Is there a problem? Well, it's the road up there. It's quite slippery, sharp curves. Never know what's going to pop up in front of you. Go ahead. Well, what about him? Yeah, he's got Stabilitrack. Seville STS with Stabilitrack, the world's most advanced integrated stability control system. It's what's next. Going to let me go? Uh, sorry, I was lost in the moment. Seville STS, it's what's next. Update for you in the NHL, Sabres and Canadiens. First period, no score. Habs on the power play. Saku Koivu in front. And Koivu got it there, and Brian Savage puts it through up top. Canadiens take a 1-0 lead. That's where they are right now. Second period, five and change left. Savage with his 12th goal of the year. Montreal has lost three straight games. Buffalo with just one win in their last five games at home. To the NBA, while the ship was sinking, Jason Williams played on. Broken nose, no problem. Busted up thumb, no problem. Broken leg, that's a problem. The Nets, in a period of weeks, losing their coach, and now their all-star center. New Jersey, 6-24, and 24, going in against Miami this afternoon. But surprise, surprise, to the Meadowlands, this is some sequence. Look at this. No, says Zoe. Oh. Keith Van Horn, rejected by morning. Keep it going. Thunder Dan, Dan Marley up, rejected by Kendall Gill. Keep it going. Same sequence. Kerry Kittles goes up and Zo rejected by Morning. Morning with nine block shots. Later on, Miami up two. P.J. Brown, look out. Got that from Alonzo. Morning, Miami up 5-4. Second quarter. Kendall Gill time. Gill. Read it. Stole it. He'll slam it. He had 15 points. Net within one. Third quarter. More from Gill. Watch closely on defense. Gill just takes it away. Lucius Harris is there. He gives it up. Harris and one of 11 steals for Gill. Nets up by 11. Nets up by 11. Closing seconds. Gill one rebound shy of a triple-double and everything go his way. Nobody there. He had 15 points, 11 steals, 10 rebounds, a triple-double. He earned it. Nets beat the Heat 88 to 77. Gill's 11 steals tying an NBA record held by Larry Keenan. Keith Van Horn with 27. Stefan Marbury with 21. The Heat committing 21 turnovers and Alonzo Mourning, 23 points, 17 boards, 9 block shots in a losing effort. 
Miami has lost four in a row and six of its last seven. Red Hot Raptors, Toronto, winning 10 of 12 going in against the Wizards. Tracy McGrady, yikes! Raptors by four at the half. Late in the fourth, gets a crunch time, Vince Carter. Oh my, hang time with some spin. Carter with 18, Raptors by six, worth another look. Sensational, no, we're not kidding you. Wizards though, coming back down to Mitch Richmond. Knocking down the three. Wizards by one. Young Raptors respond. Young, maybe not. Kevin Willis, the veteran. Willis knocks that down. In the final half minute of play, Raptors up by one. Wizards with another chance. Mitch Richmond. Tanned it up himself. No, not even close. And how about those Raptors? 86 or 87 to 85. Raptors win this one. Toronto has won 11 of its last 13 games. Eight straight wins at home. Willis, 22 points, 11 boards. And Vince Carter had 18 in this one. The Raptors win again. In the NCAA championship game, it is Maine leading New Hampshire one to nothing. That'll do it from here. I'm Brian Kenny. Send it back out to Anaheim after this. Darlings, the best selection of automobiles in eastern Maine, period. Darlings Auto Mall has Pontiac Bonnevilles, Grand Ams, and Grand Prix, plus Buick LeSabre, Centuries, and Park Avenues. Darling Van Gogh Ford Volkswagen Audi has new Contours, Mustangs, Tauruses, Jettas, Beetles, Passats, A4s, and A6s. Darlings Honda Nissan Volvo has new Accords, Civics, Maximus, Altima, Centrus, S70s, V70s, and S80s. Darlings, the best selection of automobiles in eastern Maine, all with the lowest price, period. At Darlings, we've always had a passion for used cars and trucks. We consider each vehicle unique with its own story to tell. We've always brought you the best vehicles at the best prices. Now we've found a special way to bring you even more value. We call it Darling Select. These are the best of the best used vehicles. Almost new and at incredibly low payments where you never need one dime down. You just bring the first payment and drive away today. Sounds unbelievable, but it's true, and it's only at Darlings. The 99 NFL Draft, live on ESPN and ESPN2. Join the ESPN NFL Draft team for all the picks, plus live reports from inside the war rooms. The 99 NFL Draft, the players, the teams, the future, Saturday, April 17th at noon on ESPN. I'm talking about you being able to go out and achieve what you want to be able to achieve. The leadership qualities that the people have here just go beyond what you'd expect for college students. It's more than just leadership in athletics. I mean, I'm sure you take leadership wherever you go. Because when it really comes down to it, the NCAA is all about us. meeting between these bitter arch rivals in Hockey East, Maine, and UNH. The Wildcats and Black Bears heated confrontation thus far. Promises only to get better in the latter two periods. Welcome back to the pond, everyone. Dave Ryan, Brian Engblom, Al Timisho, the UMaine goal, says he loves to model himself after Patrick Waugh of Colorado in the first period. He looked like old number 33 out there. He modeled himself after everybody in that period. He was absolutely fantastic. It was the goaltending and the penalties that were the story really in that first. Talk about the highlights, and Alfie Micho came through. He had a big game against Boston College, making 35 saves in the semifinals. Look great over here. Yeah, he had to flop down an awful lot, I think more than he would have liked to, but he was just under siege at certain times. How he saved that one, I'm not quite sure. Maybe he isn't sure either, but he was just absolutely spectacular. Gave his team every chance, and then Maine did come back. Nice play by Vitorino driving wide getting the puck to the net, and then Ben Gite finished it off. Everything's under control to this point, but the problem is for Conklin, he leaves that rebound out there, and Ben Gite gets to it. That's the difference in this first period. Both teams have to be aware, obviously, that there will be some penalties called in this game. Look at the saves for Michel. 16, six rebounds. He does have a tendency to give rebounds out, but he has snuffed everything out and done everything just completely. Numbers through one period of play. His scoring chances was pretty good for UNH at 14-11. Absolutely. I mean, inside the zone, I thought UNH did absolutely everything they needed to do. They moved the puck around well, but Misho was a story. Second period. When we come back to Anaheim, it's a one nothing Black Bear lead. Whenever you call, wherever you call, wherever you're calling from, 
When you switch to Sprint Sense anytime, every long distance call on Sprint is just a dime a minute. And now you get up to 100 minutes of free calling on our dime. Call 1 800 PIN DROP now, and every minute of every day can be a dime well spent. Your calls from home, your calling card calls, even calls to your personal 800 number are now just a dime a minute with Sprint Sense anytime. Come live in a world created around you where calls on the road cost the same as calls from home and having a personal 800 number means collect calls are a thing of the past. Call 1-800-PIN-DROP for dime a minute calls 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Even on calling card calls too. Switch to Sprint Sense anytime now and you'll also get up to 100 minutes absolutely free. 1-800-PIN-DROP. Sprint ahead. Tonight's intermission report is presented by Taco Bell. Welcome back, everyone, to the pond in Anaheim. And the sign that, unfortunately, they're folding up right now. It was great. We saw it a moment ago. It said, welcome to the Krog Pond, as in Jason Krog. <laughs> you know, talking to the Hobie Baker Award winner yesterday, Brian, had a nice chat with him. He said, you don't realize how long I've waited for this moment, this game, to take place. Tremendous anticipation and some power play time to begin things off here in the second period as well. Wedge down by a goal. Souza and Haydar, and here is Krog just inside the goal line. Filippowicz comes back to Jason Krog. O'Brien lost the handle briefly. Throws toward the net, deflected just wide by Haydar. Krog now handles. Banks along the dasher. Peter Metcalf tries to intercept, and Cullen helps clear it down ice along with Steve Correa. When Maine's inside their own zone against that big Krog line, anytime they touch the puck, it has to get all the way out. Krog for O'Brien on the move. It's on a circle. Bouncing pucks to loose. Came high up into the air. And wait a minute. Being oh. waved off by Mike No. It was tipped up and then went directly into the air in front of Alfie Misha. We'll have to see the replay to sort it all out. A lot of action in front of Alfie Misha. A couple of players pushing and shoving as well. And the whistle had definitely gone before the puck was actually inadvertently put into their own net by a main player. But Alfie Misho had already heard the whistle, so I think he had given up on the play anyway. UNH players seem a little bit confused. Alfie Misho not worried about it at all. But a lot of traffic in front of him. And it looks like there's going to be another penalty. I assume there probably would be out of all this. Down low in front of the net. That extra pushing and shoving. Vitorino, I believe, the man in the penalty box going for high sticking. Alfie Micho trying to look around a series of players in front of him. Janik and Eck were getting into it in front of the net, but it ends up being a high sticking call that will put the UNH team up five on three. Another critical situation in this hockey game. For the next minute three, that is a five on three situation now for the Wildcats have been excellent at times this year with their power play unit. Obviously, they are so dangerous with the weapons they put out on the ice. Now, a big test for them. Fifth in the NCAA in power play efficiency, and right off the faceoff, we have a violation that will send it outside the blue line. Yeah, Hadar had the stick knocked out of his hand, at least one hand, so he tried to scoop it along to his teammate, Souza. You can't do that in the offensive zone, so the faceoff comes outside. Hadar, just a freshman. Talked about his record-setting year already. Tremendous season it's been for him with 59 points, 30 goals for Darren Hado. And he said he feels a lot better now. In, in the uh, semifinal game, he said he had really bad jet lag. That does happen, Dave. It's not necessarily the day after you arrive. Sometimes it's two and three days after. That's when it affected Hadar. But he says he feels really well now, and he certainly showed it in that first period. He was scooting all over the place. 45 seconds left, two-man advantage. Chance here for UNH to tie. Krog carries in, trying to set something up. Jason Krog along the end boards now inside the circle, still carries. Out for Filippowicz. He's got a rocket shot for the point. Here's Krog, very patient. Filippowicz on the move, big shot deflected over the net, barely by Hadar. Didn't miss by much. Souza sets up on the move, shot. Stop made, Michaud. Outside the circle comes to Filippowicz. 14 seconds left, two-man advance. Krog shot. Nothing, didn't get much on it. Stopped inside the circle by a skate. Jason Krog 
setting up cross ice on the move. Sousa track was denied. Comes to Hadar behind the goal line. Two seconds left in the two-man advantage. On the move, Sousa shot. Rebound moves. Hadar smothered by Michonne afterwards. Cullen sends the youngster into the end boards hard. Alfie Michaud again comes through. Spectacular play by Alfie Michaud. His reads on the play, letter perfect. Allowing him to get to the best position possible before the shot actually comes. Especially on a five on three, we're going to see a lot of puck movement. Watch Michaud as he tracks the puck. This one, I believe, will be the pass right between the feet of the forward. There it is. Michaud was there already and waiting. There was nothing to shoot at. And in a five on three, more often than not, players will shoot off the pass. Misho is there. He, the odds are in his favor. He gets out on the top edge of the crease, of the crease rather. Just a spectacular work by the young goaltender. Krog to take the face off. Now he's tossed out of the circle. Jason Krog saying yesterday also about the Hobie Baker. He just hadn't sunk in yet. Yeah. And we asked him exactly how do you try to focus on such a huge game after winning the Hobie Baker Award. Difficult less than 24 hours later to have to get ready for the national championship. He is yeah. a focused individual. Yeah, he really is. I mean, this team, under, UNH, underperformed last year in a very big way, and they did not want that to happen. You have to give them a lot of credit for being completely focused this time around. Sousa tries to come free. Frog. And they feed cross ice for Sousa. Hadar trying to set him up. He was spinning and couldn't quite get good wood on it. It's tipped over the boards out of play with 29 seconds left on the power play. Tomorrow afternoon, 3 o'clock Eastern on ABC Sports. Coverage of the Senior PGA continues with final round. Action from the tradition presented by Countrywide. The tournament was shortened to 54 holes due to, yes, snow yeah. yesterday in Scottsdale, Arizona. Going into tomorrow's final round, Grand Marsh 8 under par, a three-stroke lead on Larry Nelson. Leonard Thompson is four back, and Fernandez four back as well, along with Duvall and Gary McCool. ABC Sports tomorrow. Exciting hockey here on ESPN tonight. And it's sent down ice again by Humane and Bobby Stewart. University of Maine has to be happy that the big line for UNH has gone off the ice. Again, they controlled the play. They moved it around. They got shots on goal. They accomplished everything that you want a power play to accomplish, except score. Interception by Stewart. Tries to get out of the zone. Ragnallo kept it alive initially. Then it's poked beyond the blue line. Two seconds left in the man advantage. And the penalty to Vitorino is open. The high sticking minor killed off and a kill off of five on three. So mark that down as a key point of the game. Just three minutes into the second period, Korea. Now on the ice along with Gustafson trying to make UNH pay for unable to come through with a two man advantage. Craig Chuck tries to lead. That's Jed Jerzycki. He lost the handle, and LaRose will clear to center ice for Korea, who so far really has not seen a lot of open ice yet. We know he has the speed and great ability to handle a puck. Enders, the defenseman for UNH, playing very close to Korea. That's gutsy. That's what you should do. But when you have a guy with the speed of Steve Korea, you have to be gutsy as a defenseman to know that you can trust yourself to skate backwards fast enough to stay with him. He gave Fysix a good move in the offensive zone. Couldn't quite keep the play alive, though. And it's poked free out there with Johnny Rogers and Jason Shapolsky at center ice. The Rose tried to find the handle in between the circles. And it comes free to UNH and Eric Lind. Intercept made by Cullen. Amy Trocos tried to find the handle. David Cullen moving. Cross ice pass. And a centering play went off a skate and went just wide. It was Dan Perluck set up. Perluck got it right back in the low slot. Try to fire home. Dimitrakos has great hands, but David Cullen makes the play. Cullen will get the puck there at the point. The vision and the ability to make that pass, absolutely terrific. And the freshman Dimitrakos sees the hole, gets into it, and has it come to him at precisely the right time. He gets the pass and shoots it all in one motion. Conklin trying to track the puck, the path of the puck, gets across, but is surprised by the quickness of it. You could see he never got there and got set up completely. He was still in the process of moving his feet. Nico Dimitraco, terrific hands, great finish. Are you kidding me? Just a freshman in the biggest game of his career. Making eight goals, now 27 points. From Somerville, Massachusetts. 
5'11", 195-pounder, is telling us yesterday how big this game was in front. Another stop, B. Show. Boy, a couple of good opportunities right on the doorstep. Ryan Cordero was there for UNH. Well, UNH coming right back after a goal. You have to do that. When you're down the game, UNH has played well. Alfie Michaud has been the difference. Mays up, too. Centene Ice cools your breath twice. First, the cold minty shell chills you down. Then, the Sub-Zero flavor puts your breath on ice for a long, long time. Dentine Ice cools your breath twice. We're looking at the third, fourth, and fifth planets to help you remember 1010345, the simple way to save up to 50% on international calls. Uh, Jupiter is the fifth planet, not Saturn. Whoops. It's over. Freshman Nico Dimitrakos, terrific hands, and he has the guts to pull off big moves in game situations as well. Thursday, on the winning goal, pay attention to what he does, moving the puck between his feet as he goes in the corner. Unbelievable stuff. He goes all the way around the outside, dumps it to the front. That was the winning goal that put Maine into this position. You got to have guts. You got to do it at the right time. There was nothing wrong with doing a fancy move like that in that situation, Dave, because he was deep 200 feet away from his own net, and it was in the corner. He pulled it off and got them here. Here's Darjanic, freshman defenseman. For you, Maine, Sean Wall said yesterday his press conference, hey, they don't mind being the underdog. Cordero, good move. The offense is on. A backhand try. Michaud knocked it down. He didn't have a lot of mustard on the shot, despite some good dangling moves as he charged in along the right wing. Adriano sends that wide. Tim Walsh comes to Ryan Cordero. Line change here for UNH. Maine tries to catch them off balance. Walsh, a nice hit. Filipovic tries to backhand that out of trouble. Set right on. Conklin had a problem holding the rebound. Walsh can't clear out of his own end. Barrett Heiston tries to hold it in, and eventually it's clear down ice. In the regional playoffs, Maine, once they got a lead, especially against Clarkson, their defensemen became very active in the neutral zone. And they were just flying through there, taking runs at people. We'll see if they're that much confident or that as confident as they were then in this game now that they're up by two goals. And just Lundback. Interception tries to hit Bobby Stewart, streaking along the right wing. Lundback is in there because Brendan Walsh cracked a fibula in the game against BC. Three injured and leg injury yet from earlier this season. Stewart tries to lead Heiston along the near wing boards. Comes together with Enders. On that attempted breakout by UNH, you saw Lundback step right up at his own red line there. He had all kinds of support, and they are being a lot more aggressive. They have improved themselves so much this year from last year. They have changed their game. They are better defensively. Look at this record, the change in the record from last season to this year. That's pretty incredible. The winning percentage, wow. Second best improvement in the NCAA Denver was number one. And it looks as if they are starting to gain much needed confidence because Sean Walls, I'm sure, was aware that in that first period, were it not for his man between the pipes, that these guys in blue would be down by two, maybe three. Drama and excitement. And also, Maine remembers well what happened at the end of the regular season with UNH. Now, the Black Bears won the first two games, played up in Orono. Then the last two, with the Hockey East regular season championship on the line, a sweep by the Wildcats on yep. the big sheet in Durham. So, the Black Bears talking about that yesterday with us. Hey, they remember, and bitterly so, they want to get back at their rivals from Hockey East. Sent just why. UNH went on to the Hockey East Tournament Championship game, lost to BC in overtime. But the Eagles are out, thanks to Maine. Sent right on. Marcus Gustafson it outside the right circle, nearly intercepted on four check. Souza tried to get free. He's got a lot of power, good stride. Hadar looking to poke that loose for Krog, and at center ice it comes to the near wing boards. David Cullen back into the UNH defensive zone. Off the far wall, intercept Marcus Gustafson. Had a great first period. Created some great chances offensively for UMaine. Gallo forgot his package there. 
Need to tote the mail up. Adar. Lost possession, hit against the far wall. Comes three, Dimitrakos. Nico Dimitrakos at center ice. Banks it off that far wall into the corner. Her luck falls up along the end boards. And UNH looks to clear out to the neutral zone again. That's that solid line again for the University of Maine. Gite, Kerluck, and Dimitrakos. Very effective at all facets of the game. Very good defensively. And their defense now playing very much up on the play. Much more difficult for UNH to bring the puck up the ice. Eck and Sadowski come together in the near corner. Robert Eck. He's got that strength we talked about. 6'5", almost 220 pounds. And one of the strongest defensemen on the UMaine roster. Really uses the body and the stick well. Good technique defensively. Filipowicz. Sends that to the right point off the skate there of Vitorino. Comes loose on a freight shot. Offside pass. Trying to get it to Sadowski. Down low. Sent just wide. Jack Kaczynski was wide open. And he couldn't quite find the handle to get it by Michaud. Now an intercept from O'Brien. Lundback sends that out to the neutral zone. On a freight truck at the end of a long chip. We'll just get that toward Alfie Misho. Here's Jim Ledger. Along the near wall. Tries to send that along the boards. Intercepted first, though, by Rogers And Mark White blasts it around the boards himself. Less than 12 to go here. An exciting second period. UNH desperately needs to go to get back in this game. Down by two. One back. Wins with Magnus Lundback. One plays the fence, and in this game, one is on right wing. 11.35 to go in the second period. Alfie Misho coming up big yet again. He had 27 wins in the regular season, most in the NCAA. Welcome to My Mailboxes, etc. This is a full-service copy center. Need thousands of copies? No problem. We do it all, from start to finish. All you have to do is drop it off here. We'll take care of the rest. Say you have a big proposal. We'll color copy it, bind it, and you're on your way. Presentations, calendars, brochures, menus, we'll even laminate. All with a personal touch. Can your copy store do that? Mailboxes, etc. We're making business easier. We're making life easier. Remember when ice cream cost a dime? And your best friend and your bike were all that mattered? Well, those days are back. For a limited time, get a Yamaha V-Star from just $89 a month. It's the Yamaha Turn Back Time sales event. So see your local Yamaha dealer today. Because you won't find a deal this good anywhere else. Hi, this is Kurt Russell, and you're watching the NCAA Hockey Championships on ESPN. Go Black Bears. Go Maine, go Korea. <laughs> win, win, win. Well, he's a Mets win. fan too. <laughs> Actor Kurt Russell here with his son Wyatt to his left, 12 years old. The Los Angeles area has been involved in junior hockey for a long time. You know that from your yep. working with the LA Kings camps. And I talked with Kurt a few moments ago up here in the press box. He said, hey, we'd love to play for Maine because Kurt is a native of Rangeley, Maine in western Maine. But his son is a BU fan. Uh-oh. How do you like that? The winner he brought him to the game. <laughs> exactly. He was here yesterday videotaping Wyatt, uh, taking all the drills with Sean Walsh's main black bears. Wyatt and a buddy had quite a treat yesterday to work out with the college stars here at the pond. Lundback tries to come free with it. Instead, it's center ice. Here's Cohen. Had that great pass to Demi Truckles. Cohen on the move. His shot was knocked down. Good play by Enders. He went down to block the shot. And it comes free to Ryan Cordero. Good move at center ice. Try to get that to David Bush. Moreau inside his own circle. Dubs in battles along with Tim Walsh in the near corner. Fourth line out there for UNH. Trying to create Cordero. Dumped down hard. Hit by Peter Metcalf. Good centering play by Bush. Trying to hit Walsh and Cordero. And it comes free to the Black Bears. Corey LaRose. Good speed through the neutral zone. He crosses the line without much trouble. Rose has got that rocket slap shot. We saw that in watching the regional games and one time here tonight when he lets it loose. It's a thing to behold as that couldn't hold it in. Maine has taken control of the tempo here. I think UNH is in a little bit of shock. They know they've accomplished pretty much everything they wanted to offensively. Lots of chances so far. 
come away empty-handed and bang bang they're down two to nothing they've lost a little bit of their starts they need to regain the tempo that they had throughout most of the first period three almost was able to break free beyond the reach of darren hato remember in that first game the semifinals here at the frozen four against michigan state the top line of unh had nine points shut down here so far susan trying to change all that goes around one man was plucked at the last moment robert x on back check got a piece of it diving sprawling play now Krog comes free along the dasher. He's hit hard there by Tratnik. Good defensive play. Matthias Tratnik springs Ledger the other way. Ledger, Vitorino out there. Line change now for you, Maine, and they do their job. Nice job by O'Brien standing up at the UNH blue line, but definitely University of Maine doing an excellent job inside their own zone now. Even the big line doesn't have the zip they had there. Not getting free from their checks the way they were in that first period. And Maine is moving the puck much more aggressively. They are under control. And again, the aggressiveness between these two teams, they don't like each other at all. And it's shown here right from the drop of the puck to start this game, Dave. Here's Souza, the terrific eye-hand coordination and control, and a terrific job by Eck at the very last minute to dive across and block this pass. Great body control there by Souza. And there comes the stick from Eck. There's little things like that that we're missing in other stages and in the last game that the main played. And earlier in this game, we're starting to come back now. Junior Mike Souza, all East Regional team, the second leading scorer on the team. And Dickie Miller told us about that for their first game with Michigan State. What a key has been to the Wildcats. He had 25 points last year. This year, after four against the Spartans, 63 points for Mike Souza. That's a big reason UNH is back to the Frozen Four and now on to the championship game. Lundback sends it wide, deflected and loose on the short side. Try to jam that right in. And play is whistled down. Dan Kerluck along with Gite and Dimitrakos. Gite, Dimitrakos from that third line have been the goal scorers. Great again tonight. Dimitrakos was an excellent defensive player in high school and in prep school, but he's told me yesterday that the thing he had to improve on here at the college level as a freshman was his defensive play. He said, I never got to play very much with, oh, eight minutes or so to go early in the season. And it got down to five minutes. Now Nico plays all the time. As a matter of fact, he got double shifted in the third period with the game on the line. Sean Walsh tapped him on the back and said, we're going to double shift you, Nico. Pick up the tempo. He did, and he made that great play that we showed you on the winning goal in overtime. They soft, loose outside the left circle. Age battling for it, trying to bring it out. In their own zone, Mark White having problems with it initially. And Brad Nalo paired together in the blue line for Dick Humilly's higher seed here in the second ranked team. Mark White. Her luck all over. And we've got a call. To check from behind. With 8.50 to go here in the period. And our referee, oh, Mike Nolan, has got a call against Dan Kerluck. When we come back, power play for UNH trying to get back in this game. They are down by two after the minor penalty against Dan Kerluck. Do you know what it takes to build a career in Maine? Eastern Maine Technical College does. At Eastern Maine Technical College, you will gain the critical skills demanded by Maine employers. Eastern Maine Technical College offers full and part-time programs, day and evening in Bangor, and at outreach centers located in Belfast, Ellsworth, and East Millinocket. Eastern Maine Technical College, building a stronger Maine, one student at a time. For more information, call 941-4600. Enjoying all four seasons in Maine can be a challenge, but Village Subaru has the main solution, the all-wheel drive Subaru Outback and Forester. The main solution tames the wildest winter driving conditions, takes you off the beaten path to your favorite spring fishing hole, lets you take along all your summer fun, and shows you fall foliage others can only dream of, and with extreme safety. Forester was rated the safest small sports utility vehicle in the Insurance Institute's crash test. The wheels for all seasons, for all the right reasons. The main solution, Village Subaru, Hogan Road, Bangor. I, got, I asked a couple of University of Maine players what they know about Jason Krog and the difference that they've seen in him over the last couple of years. They said he's so much stronger on his skates and he shoots a lot more than he used to as well. This kid is a real sniper. Goaltender Alfie Michaud said that his cutbacks, meaning when he fakes the drive wide and then shuts down, and pulls back into the middle, either to make a pass or a shot. That's what Michaud really looks for as well. Jason Krog can do it all from anywhere. 
talk about respect. Sean Walsh of UMaine has that for Jason Krug. He said he is like the Larry Bird of hockey. He is such a tremendous thinker on the ice yep. and dishes so well. And yeah, talking with the UMaine players yesterday defensively, what do we do? How do you try to stop him? They're worried more about the line mates, too, because he sees the ice incredibly well. Yeah, that, and I'm looking at him and talking to him a little bit. Jason Krog reminds me of, of Joe Sackett. He's not incredibly big, but he's extremely strong, especially in the upper body and great hands. And Cap, the intercept. The Rose on the move. In a low slot, was tripped up. No call, though. Had Korea ahead of the pass. Now you made the other way. Flip with big shot. Rebound. Off the post. It was Krog off the post. But a rebound. For the Wildcats, they come that close to making a 2-1 game. Again, the big line makes all the right decisions. They move the puck around. Flip with blasted it. The rebound came right to Krog, and he whipped it off the goal post. Flip which leads Krog again. Collins trying to find the handle. Here's Michael Souza inside the circle. Big point of the game here for UNH. Filipowicz moves to Krog outside the left circle. Tries to flip it down low. And Cullen, a nice intercept. And he'll clear down ice. Good read by Cullen. David Cullen plays an awful lot. This second period is critical to him, to him because he's a long ways from his bench. He'll play 30 minutes tonight. Some of his shifts get two, two and a half minutes long. He can't get caught out there tired, especially killing penalties against the Krog line. Jedrzejewski lost the handle on a Fred Chuck try to come free. You made the other way. Big shot put right on from Bobby Stewart. Mike Conklin makes the stop. Greg Nalo will move it up. 20 seconds now. Power play time remaining here. For the Wildcats, they came so close to sawing the Black Bear lead in half. Eck will battle in the corner. Along with Sadowski. John Sadowski just below the goal line. Eck comes free. Tries to clear. Kept alive, though. Comes to the near side, Bregnano race, final seconds of the power play. Gannick help get to it, and it's even strength. Kerluck ahead of the field. He's got Ferrino with him. Shot scores! There, Kerluck! Just out of the box! Umaine leads by three! They're getting closer in Orono to another national championship! The end of the power play, you have to be aware of that man coming out of the box. UNH is not. Bragnello gets caught up the ice. Kerlock comes out, does a terrific job on the two-on-one. He's a left-hand shot attacking on the right wing side. So he has the option of a very good shot. He fakes the pass and the shot. The UNH defender turned around playing only the pass. A lot of defensemen are taught that these days. I'm not sure I agree with that. Kerlock moves into the middle, finishes off completely by a shot to the five-hole, 3-0. We may have a main player in the crease. It was Jason Vitriano. He was there early, and if they review it, they can in the college game. Mike Note, the referee, is going upstairs. Hold on, everybody. We may, in fact, have a goal called back from Dan Kerluck. And Sean Walsh was so close to a 3-0 lead. That's right. I forgot, letter of the law. I forgot about that. In college right. hockey, if you skate through the crease at all, they blow the whistle right away. That one's not going to count. From what we just saw, I think this goal is going to be disallowed. It doesn't matter where the puck is. Once a player even skates through the crease, the whistle is blown. And unless I miss something here at a second look at that replay, Kerlock's good effort there will be for naught. Goal under review. And Mike Knoll on the horn upstairs with the Video watch goal, the skates. Just take a look. Yeah, watch the skates on the left. According to the rule, anytime a player skates through, automatically the whistle should be blown and blown down, and that one is not going to count, even though it has nothing to do with the goal. Jason Vitorino skating through the crease. Boy, they're on the phone a long time here. They only use the replay here in the uh, regional playdowns and in these finals. Mike Doth being joined by assistant referee Bill Jones and the other assistant referee Tim Katira. No goal. And is waved off. So Dan Kerluck loses the opportunity to give you Maine, not by his own fault, a print at the lead of Dick Humilly of UNH. Breathes a huge sigh of relief because it is a close game again, just a two-goal deficit for the Wildcats. This may be the break that UNH will need to build on because everything they have done so far, and they've done a lot of good things, especially offensively, and they have keep coming away empty-handed. Now the University of Maine, how will they handle it? I mean, they're still feeling pretty good about themselves. They're up two to nothing, and they've been playing a lot better in this second than they did in the first. Fans who have come so far all 
the way across the country. 3,043 miles to be exact from Durham, New Hampshire to Anaheim, California. It's a game again. LaRose on the move. Tried to rip off a shot that O'Brien broke up. Along the dash of the two of battle for it to the end boards. Here's Steve Korea. That's 5'7", about 165 pounds. But as we said, lightning fast on his skates as his older brother Paul's stick skills as well at times. Whistle and a high stick called by a referee Mike Noth with 6.08 to go. Tomorrow afternoon, 12.30 Eastern time, more NCAA championship action. The best college golfers on hand for the collegiate golf championships. UNLV is the defending champ, while top-ranked Oklahoma looks to throw them. For more, log on ESPN.com. A part of the Go Network, go.com. More NCAA championship action tomorrow on ESPN. Well, unfortunately for me, Jason Vitorino is the man who skated through the crease at just the inopportune time to cause a disallowance of that last goal by Kerluck, which was a terrific play. It would have had them up three to nothing. But right now, what they'll be looking at is a power play for the University of Maine. We have Darren Hadar has taken a penalty for UNH, so a chance for them to go ahead three nothing again. Elbowing minor on Hadar, the freshman. So for the next two, Maine, another great opportunity. Heisman tries to take advantage. Comes out to the near circle. And again, Sadowski on the move. A blast from outside the blue line. And Alfie Misho sees it all the way. Misho saying yesterday, we can't control the five minutes in front or behind. Just the moment at hand. On a freight truck, got great train at center ice. He was hit hard and knocked down for UH. Janet on the move, a shot. Short side rebound for Heisman. And it's smothered up by Conklin. Heiston smelling blood there. He was waiting for that puck to drop out from the between the feet of Conklin. Conklin did a good job to cover up because had that one showed its face at all, it would have been in the back of the net. Freshman from Anchorage, Alaska. 12 goals this year for Barrett Heiston. Good killer instinct shown on this power play. Just a basic shot from bad angles. And there's Heiston. Where is it? Actually did get one rip at it before Conklin was able to sit on it. Those are the things, again, that earlier in the game, Maine was not really sharp on, but they've done a much better job in doing that. And now, we'll be getting another penalty here. On a fray chuck. Wow. It'll be a five-on-three situation now in favor of the University of Maine. Slashing call goes on on a fray chuck, and he was involved a moment ago in getting just crushed at center ice. So he joins teammate Darren Hadar in the Wildcat penalty bench. And guess what? For the next buck 24, a five-on-three for the Black Bears. Slashing minor on Chad Onofrecha. A couple of guys not happy to be in the box at all. On a freight truck, the latest one. Doesn't want the camera staring him in the face. Moves it over. Now I think we got another penalty. We can't even get the game resumed before Mike Noth, the referee, has got more whistles and arms up in the air. Let's try to sort this one out now at 527 left here in the has to be area. Has to be an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty, I would. I would assume Metcalf, number four for UNH, now gone to the box. Oh, boy. Oh. Oh, almost the entire roster seems to be going into the sim bin here for Dick Millie's Wildcats. And you know Sean Walsh and UMaine can smell the blood in the water. They are getting close. They'll have the two-man advantage for a minute 19. Well, surviving this point now will be absolutely critical for UNH. They're already down by two goals. This will be a five on three for an extended period of time. And they've got to regain themselves, both emotionally and physically out there on the ice. Out to Cullen. Five on three. David Cullen, the Rose, got that great shot for point. Cullen shot deflected high and wide over the right shoulder of Conklin. They can't clear. The Rose cross ice for Korea. Steve Korea loves to set up in that circle. On the McCullough shot again, deflected wide by Ben Gite. Cullen a die to keep it in the zone, can't do it. And it's clear to center ice for the Rose. Five on three for the next 53 seconds. David Cullen, defensive, great stick handle for Steve Korea. He's got Gustafson set up down low. Gite there as well. Cross ice pass the Rose for Korea. Steve Korea lost the handle. It's clear low by Steve O'Brien. 
Correa slowly sneaks in from that faceoff circle on the off-wing side. They are looking for him constantly to make that play. Obi Baker, finalist, one of the ten best players in the nation this year. Here's Corey LaRose, across the line. Thought about that big shot. I don't need Gite down low. He has one of the two goals in front for Correa. Deflected wide and comes out to the point again. Cullen. On the move, Dave Cullen trying to force it down low. Gustafson will spin it along the sideboards. Comes out for Dave Cullen again. Ten seconds left. Two man advance. LaRose down low. Korea in front. Gite whack in. Gustafson two. And it clips through somehow. Conklin really doing a job on Gite in front of the net as well. LaRose winds up. Big shot save made. Conklin. And they clear. Out of the box. Here comes Hadar. There Hadar. A breakaway in. He scores! The freshman lights the lead. with terrific skills and the presence of mind to come out and get free right out of the penalty box goes high on Alfie Micho. Micho has been going down a lot in this game. He tries to take away everything low and Hadar comes in, measured it. You can see he's got a ton of time. That's terrific hands. Unbelievable for this young freshman whom I talked to yesterday was calm and composed and full of confidence and UNH breathing a huge sigh of relief saying, hey, that guy in goal is not invincible. 31st goal of the year for Darren Hadar. Hockey East Rookie of the Year. He has now broken the freshman scoring record set back in 1975 up in Durham by Bobby Miller. Another point for Hadar. And again, the new mark in UNH history. There was a critical point on the original shot by Maine on Conklin. Conklin makes the save on the shot from the point. Watch this and watch the rebound. It comes out a long ways, but UNH gets to it. And both Maine defensemen so focused on trying to score goals forgot about the guy coming out of the penalty box and it cost them in the biggest way possible. Boy, you're right. Talked with Hadar yesterday. He was so loose about how big this game was. Just a freshman. Soft hands. That is terrific. With a great speed, the coaches have nicknamed him the Flea because he moves so quickly and bounces around. That time he bounced out of the box and got ahead of the pack for a breakaway goal. Misho could do nothing there. There's a penalty being called here. A bench minor against UMaine. Now coming up on ESPN, Sunday Night Baseball starts its 10th season for the Colorado Rockies against the San Diego Padres. It's MLB's first game played outside the U.S. or Canada. Jim Leland begins his tenure as manager for Colorado. A big game from Monterey, Mexico. Tony Gwynn and the Pods defend their National League title coming up tomorrow night. There was a big delay after that uh, goal was scored. Sean Welsh had his players all over at the bench, and it results in a penalty. I don't know if it's a bench mine or not. We haven't heard the call yet. I assume it must have to be because it was called so long after the fact. No players went to the faceoff circle right away. Walsh was very animated. The referee stood across the other side of the ice. Next thing you know, a main guy in a penalty box. It's Kerr Luck. And uh, we'll see what the call is. Four on four for the next few seconds. Shot put right on. Delay of game call against Ubain after the goal being scored by Hadar. John Walsh trying to stop momentum. Now power play for UNH. Talk about a switch in momentum. This game has been so topsy-turvy. Five on threes, dodged by Maine. A goal scored, almost three nothing. Instead, Flipwitz on the ball, rebound with Sousa. Good tee it up, set right on again, makes you a save. They can't clear, set just wide. Down low again, they work it. Flipwitz on the move, a shot. Rebound comes right to O'Brien. Couldn't find the handle at the right point. Jamie Flipwitz has the big shot, sends it on. Sousa tries for a rebound. Janik can't clear it away. Again, it's Hadar. Sharp angle is tripped up by Janik, and he got crushed. Hadar was hit hard and smothered, and it's cleared down ice. The action fast and furious. I guess the University of Maine has been called for an illegal line change because you only have a certain amount of time once the referee signals to put your lineup out after a whistle, after the goal in this case, and Maine didn't do it. Hadar free again, tries to step off a shot saved by Michaud. We had Jason Crawford right there with him. Out to the blue line and cleared down ice. Peter Metcalf, a stop he will change here, or at least get back. Not take a chance defensively to try to pinch in on the play. 15 seconds power play time left. On the move. 
Jason Shapolsky along the near wall. Metcalf tries to clear. Shapolsky a good move to keep it alive. And Jim Ledger comes free. That's center ice. He'll send it all the way down. Final seconds of the bench minor, the delay of game minor call against Humane. They've cleared the penalty or even strength five aside again. Less than two minutes left. Exciting. Second period. Bicic will follow up along with Begg into the near corner it comes. Johnny Rogers sends it around the boards again. Humane tries to just get it out for the ropes. On the move, looking at spring career with that great speed. They almost got it to him just by a stride. He was behind the play, not by much. It was Kurluck trying to get it there. Steve Korea battling there with Anna Frecha. Center ice, they work it again. On the move, Anna Frecha. And Tetris hits Keith down low. The cut pull the trigger. His stick was held up at the last possible moment. Rose trying to pick it free. Ender's lost position. Matt Jędrzejczyk across the line thought about pulling the trigger himself. Then he centers. Matt Chat on a Fred Chuck cruising in, but he couldn't find a hand. Steve Korea the move himself at center ice. Big hit there. And Gite ended up getting hit hard and coming down to the ice hard. And now we've got a whistle. 54.9 seconds remaining in a thrilling second period from the pond. It's a new game, 2-1, you made the lead. By the year 2000, 10 million kids will end up on the streets and in the back alleys of our nation's cities, wandering from spot to spot, searching for a place to turn a trick. on the streets in 66. Good job! McDonald's will give you the Corvette. But what you do with it is up to you. The excitement of the Monopoly game is back at McDonald's. Just buy America's favorite fries and play for a chance to win millions of prizes, including a stunning Chevrolet Corvette convertible. <laughs> Where can you go to play the Monopoly game today? Did somebody say McDonald's? Steve Correa made an outstanding play on his last shift. He was a little bit fortunate that he did not get a penalty as UNH went to the net. Stop it right here. There's Correa right there. He will come back to the net and make just a huge play. Go ahead and roll it. Under pressure. He's yanking. He's yanking. He pulled down on a freight chuck and helped save a goal possibly for UNH. So Steve Correa contributing at both ends of the ice. He still has had not very much room to work with in the offensive zone, but he came all the way back to his own net to save one there. Look at the shot numbers for UNH. 35. 19 in the second frame. There's 50 seconds left. Sean Walsh, the UNH coach, telling us what a great work ethic Korea has and what a tremendous defensive player he's become, not just the blazing speed and amazing hands. He works as hard as Paul did when Paul was in Orono for his Hubby Baker winning year and, of course, the national championship in 93. Guess what? The busiest man on the ice, Mike Noth, our referee, has a tripping minor call with 35.3 left. Another penalty coming up against the Wildcats. Yeah, it looks like a tripping call. I believe it's Darren Hadar away from the play. Another power play chance here. 35 seconds to go here in this second period. And it's Maine on the power play. Now Sean Walsh, the head coach of your Maine, talks about the comparison between the two great Korea brothers, Paul and Steve. The difference uh, that I see with the two of them is, is maybe uh, just the fact that, that Steve's a little more of an in-tight player. He likes, to, he likes to play in the corners more. Paul uses his breakaway speed to, to, to create open ice rush chances, not that Paul doesn't create down low chances. but. I think the, the real key is the similarity between them, which is their tremendous humility, their tremendous poise, and maybe most importantly of all, their tremendous drive to just get better day by day. Out to the point for Cullen. Big shot. Hopkins saw it late and handcuffed him, and he knocked it down with a glove hand. Finally, was able to smother up 30.6 seconds left here in the second period. And just five seconds into the power play for Maine. Good, sh good save there by Conklin, because he had to get down on his knees and look through a lot of people. Conklin's very aware of Steve Correa, naturally, because he is the leading scorer on Maine. He's also very conscious of David Cullen, 
the man who took that shot from the point. Cullen's got good hands. He ripped that shot from the blue line. He was trying to go upstairs on Conklin because Korea, Cullen, and Maine realize that Conklin does like to go down. Even though he's a pretty big guy, he does like to flop down. They've tried to go high upstairs on him several times. Steve Korea against Clarkson in the game in Worcester, Massachusetts, the regional to get here. He's had a career high and a school all-time high with six points. He was 3-3 three and three in that game against the Golden Knights. But since then, has been really shut down here at the Frozen Four. Rose tries to send it down low for Steve Korea. Shut out the first game. No points for that top line. Gite battling. He's upended. The defensive play comes out for LaRose. Sends it to the corner. Steve Korea trying to change all that now and give Maine the lead. Final seconds of the period. Grog looks to clear it. Sends it around the boards and down ice. And that should do it for the second 20 minutes. There'll still be a minute 24 of power play time remaining in the third period when we resume but Jason Krog and UNH down by one. We saw a great defensive play by Steve Correa a moment ago. Jason Krog in this situation equally as good killing penalties in the dying seconds of the second period just laid across the slot area and took away a potential scoring chance for the University of Maine. Great offensive player. There's Krog sliding across. That's not a defenseman. That's their number one offensive player in that situation. Just terrific stuff from the top players on both teams. Watch Krog. Here he is. 28 white. A chance for Maine to walk out. Nobody else in front. Jason Krog. Great decision there. Good stuff. Says a lot about the Hobie Baker. Yeah. Sacrifice himself. The SPN News comes up next. Dentine Ice cools your breath twice. First, the cold minty shell chills you down. Then, the Sub-Zero flavor puts your breath on ice for a long, long time. Dentine Ice cools your breath twice. What is the best detergent for getting rid of bacteria in your laundry? New Tide with bleach. The only detergent that kills 99.9% .9 of bacteria. Richard began to lose control in the summer of 96. We didn't know what to think. He needed help. Richard was out of control. Our new Toro Personal Pace mower could help. It's our most advanced self-propelled mower, extremely responsive to the touch, allowing him superior control. We know there are more like Richard. Thanks to Toro, there's hope. Other innovative Toro products are used exclusively at Alabama's Robert Trent Jones Golf Trail. Dentine Ice cools your breath twice. First, the cold minty shell chills you down. Then, the Sub-Zero flavor puts your breath on ice for a long, long time. Dentine Ice cools your breath twice. The NCAA thanks its corporate partners who dedicate financial resources, talent, and expertise to help emphasize the vital role intercollegiate athletics plays in society and in the overall development of student athletes. The support of higher education by these outstanding corporate citizens also provides funding for NCAA youth programs and NCAA championships. The NCAA and its corporate partners together building a better experience for our student athletes. The 2000 NCAA Hockey Championship is coming to the Providence Civic Center in Providence, Rhode Island, hosted by Providence College. Don't miss your chance to see the best teams in college hockey compete next year at the Frozen Four on April 6th and 8th. For tickets, call 401-865-2500. That's 401-865-2500. Or visit the NCAA website at www.ncaa.org. From the worldwide leader in sports, this is ESPN News. Hello to our special friends watching College Hockey's National Championship game on ESPN. We'll get you back in moments. Jim Frazier, Bill Seward updating you real quick from around the NHL. Yeah, we get off with some more hockey. The Flyers and the Bruins getting together at the Fleet Center. The Flyers without Eric Lindros, the collapsed lung of the other night. The Mark Recchi also out. John LeClaire out. Rod Brindamore not out, but he couldn't get the puck in the net as Byron Defoe, one of his 24 saves. And then later in the first, Sergei Samsonov beating John Van Beesbrook for his 23rd of the season. The Bruins up 1-0. Third period, Flyers down 3-0, and Jason Allison taking Steve Duchesne into the boards. Duchesne would leave the game. The Flyers, well, they would leave the scoreboard on zero. 
as Byron Defoe stopping 24 shots, getting his league-leading ninth shutout. He becomes the first Bruin to post nine shutouts since Hall of Famer Terry Sawchuck back in 1955-56. A birthday boy, Sean Bates, by the way, has seven goals in 41 NHL games. Devils and the Penguins, second period, no score, and New Jersey's Jason Arnott has his original shot stopped, but he gets the rebound and pumps it home for his fifth, and a 1-0 Devils lead, and then 2-1 Devils in the same period. And Jean-Sebastien Aubin with 29 saves in the first two periods. Third period, 3-1 Devils, and Yaramir Yager stretching out and getting his 40th. 3-2 the Devils, and then later in the third, the Penguins trying to clear. Dave Andrew Chuck the swipe, and he beats Peter Skudra. His second of the game, 14th of the season, and the Devils win it 4-2, extending their unbeaten streak to six games. The 25th road victory, moving them within two of tying the NHL single-season record set by the Canadiens. New Jersey has won four in a row in this series. Sabres, Canadiens, first period, no score, and the Habs on a power play, and Saku Koivu to Brian Savage. And Brian getting his 12th of the season. Jason Daw also adding a goal, his fifth, and Jeff Sanderson getting a score for Buffalo. 2-1, the Habs in the third period of this one. Montreal with three consecutive losses. Buffalo with just one win in its last five home games. Leafs and Flames, second period, Matt Sundin says, puck please, and he knows where to put it. Game tied at one, Sundin's 27th of the year. He and Alexander Kapatsev teaming up to do a lot of damage. Kapatsev, the one-timer pass, Ken Reggett, two on Leafs, his third of the year. Minutes later, Kapatsev, it is better to give than to receive, and Sundin happy to receive. 3-1 Leafs, his 28th and second of the game. And a Toronto on a tear, at least against uh, Calgary. Seven straight wins. Toronto unbeaten in four straight. Calgary winless in its last four. Sens and Panthers. Florida digging for that eighth spot in the East. Alexi Yashin just walks in and beats Sean Burke. And we're tied at one apiece. Later in the first, it's now 2-1 Sens on the power play. Yashin again stick handles it and beats Burke again for his 43rd of the year. Makes it 3-1 Ottawa. And the Ottawa Senators, unbeaten in four straight. Florida, meanwhile, 2-0 against the Sens this season. 2-5-1, though, in its last eight. Overall in trouble for the Panthers. Victor Kozlov fractured a finger on his right hand. He will not return. Oilers and Avalanche set to uh, drop it in about 29 minutes from now. Uh, Bob Essenza and Patrick Waugh in their respective goals. Colorado unbeaten in five straight. Edmonton four consecutive losses on the road. Plenty more to come from the National Championship of College Hockey. The Wildcats hang it up in their first ever big game appearance. We will be right back. Well, let's get going. Okay, there is no time to lose. Subscribers are waiting. We have to send out these official ESPN the Magazine duffel bags ASAP. Right, buddy? Right. Oh. ESPN, the magazine duffel bag. All right. Now's a great time to subscribe to ESPN, the magazine. Because we're sending every new subscriber this official ESPN, the magazine duffel bag. Absolutely free with your paid subscription. Whoa, look, look at these duffel bags. And it's got the ESPN, the magazine logo right on the side. How great is this, huh? Ralph, I think we're getting a little behind here, buddy. I, I can put my sneakers in here and... And, and my water bottle, and, and my basketball. Man, this is great. Well, help me, man. How do I look? Oh, that's... <laughs> <laughs> Subscribe now to ESPN The Magazine and get your sports the way it ought to be. Big and bold with unbelievable photos. Honest interviews that'll surprise you. The ins, outs, and insights that give you our take on the teams to beat and the players to watch. Plus, regular reports by your favorite ESPN personalities. Call now and get 26 issues, a year's worth for just a dollar an issue. A dollar an issue. That's 66% off the newsstand price. And with your paid subscription, you'll get your own ESPN The Magazine duffel bag. Absolutely free. Ralph, I'm begging you, man. Wally, Help me. believe we're giving these away for free? Hey, I wonder what lucky new subscriber is going to get this one, huh? 
No subscriber is going to get that one unless you put it in a box. Right. right. Call now for ESPN the magazine and your free double bag. 1-800-559-9977. 1-800-559-9977. Stars and Blues getting together in St. Louis, Brett Hall. Back in St. Louis, where things are falling apart, literally. Fortunately, we have some adhesive engineers to take care of the complicated repair work. Second period, four on four hockey. Hall comes out from behind the net. Grant Fuhrer has no shot. We're tied at one. Hall's 29th of the year. He's taking it to the third period now. It's a 3-2 Blues lead. Pavel Dimitro was huge in the third period. He's already got one goal. He's got the puck. And make that two. And the Blues roll. 5-2, Dimitra outshining Brett Hall with his two goals and assist in the third period. The Blues are now just five points away from clinching a playoff spot. Dallas needs seven more points in seven games for home ice throughout the postseason. Four more Dallas points will break the 1998 club's record of 109. Ducks and Isles, if you please, first period. Watch the action at center ice. Pascal Trepanier levels Marius Tchaikovsky. Tchaikovsky left under his own power. I am Batman. Still in the first. Kevin Howler comes out of the corner with the puck. Loses it to Trevor Linden, who beats Dominic Boucher. And 1-0 Islanders. Linden ends a 17-game goalless streak. And Linden just feeling groovy. Linden. All over the ice and all over the net in this one as the Islanders are holding that 2-1 advantage. Winless, though, in seven straight at Nassau. Anaheim, meanwhile, 4-2-1 in its last seven. Hurricanes and the Blackhawks getting together. No score in the second period when Jeff O'Neill says, I will change that and pump home the 14th on the season. Andre Kovalenko with the assist. one nothing. the Canes holding the advantage in this one. In the second period, Carolina with just one victory in the last eight games. But, well, Archers Irve and the crew trying to hold on to that one nothing lead. Chicago Friday's loss to Detroit, ending a four-game unbeaten streak. Kings and the Predators all even in the second period. Luke Robitaille with his 35th of the season. Los Angeles has lost four of the last five with just seven goals during that span. Nashville... Trying to go 3-0 and against the Kings this season. Cliff Ronning with uh, his 20th of the season for Nashville. We are on a scoring spree in Tampa Bay. And scoring spree in Tampa Bay are not often in the same sentence unless they're giving them up. Tampa Bay winless in five straight. Jacques Demour is coaching his 1,000th game. Washington 3-1 and against Tampa Bay this season. But then, hey, who is it? No applause, Espanol! No problemo. ESPN has got the game from Monterrey, Mexico, between San Diego and Colorado in Inglés. It's a mucho gusto affair. Be there Sunday night at 8. We return you now to the pond in Anaheim. More great college hockey. Do you know what it takes to build a career in Maine? Eastern Maine Technical College does. At Eastern Maine Technical College, you will gain the critical skills demanded by Maine employers. Eastern Maine Technical College offers full and part-time programs, day and evening in Bangor, and at outreach centers located in Belfast, Ellsworth, and East Millinocket. Eastern Maine Technical College, building a stronger Maine, one student at a time. For more information, call 941-4600. Want to drive a winner? Your checkered flag's waiting at Bean & Conquest. How about the winningest car in NASCAR Winston Cup history? Chevy Monte Carlo as little as $69.89. Power locks, power windows, power seats, air conditioning, CD player. Monte Carlo performance, just $69.89 at Bean & Conquest. Or drive Motor Trend's truck of the year, Chevy Silverado, starting at just $14,890. Bean & Conquest has a huge selection, but at $14,890, they're moving fast. Drive a winner at Bean & Conquest Chevrolet, Summer Street, Bangor, where we dare to deal. With the year 2000 approaching, we're trying to make sure the software here at Sports Center is Y2K compliant. Y2K test in three, two, one. Oops. More from the NBA and an NFL trade right after this. We definitely have a few bugs to work out, but we'll be ready. Follow me. Follow me to freedom. Rick, this is Jim Hopkinson, a producer with ESPN Fantasy Games. Uh, the Rick, you're a fantasy baseball owner. You going on strike is not going to bring Mo Vaughn back to the Red Sox. Take that up with their management. This is a business line.
ESPN's exclusive presentation of the NCAA Division I Hockey Championship is brought to you by Tide. If it's got to be clean, it's got to be Tide. Things looking pretty good if you're from Orono, Maine. A 2-1 Maine Black Bear lead over New Hampshire after two. This year, they're 23-0-2 and having a lead after 40 minutes. That's where they sit right now. Welcome back, everyone, to the pond. Dave Ryan, Brian Engblom. Brian, we saw everything in a topsy-turvy first and especially second period. Nine penalties in the second frame alone. This has been a wild game, and both teams are going to have to get themselves under control because of those penalties. Even the coaches get distracted in a game like this. A team that gets themselves under control the best in this third period is going to win this game, I think. Well, Brian, Steve Carrillo told us yesterday the big impact the four freshmen have had for you, Maine, have been a huge role in the way Umain has played this year. Nico Dimitrakos, one of those. David Cullen made the initial play to get it to Dimitrakos, and then the second goal was scored by Curla coming out of the penalty box, but a skate by Vitorino going through the crease made all the difference, and UNH came right back. Hadar coming out of the penalty box. He goes in just smooth hands, tremendous under pressure. The freshman pulls off a goal and narrows the lead to just one. Here are the staff through two periods. 28 to 18 is scoring chances in favor of the UNH. So you can see that they've done everything still offensively that they want to, but they haven't been able to score enough goals. I hear the two offensive stars, one for each team, Jason Krog, his minutes, and the minutes for Steve Korea. Krog's line has played a lot more in these playoffs than Korea's line has, and it shows right there. And Brian, we talked to Jason Krog, the Hobie Baker Award winner, about winning the award that makes him the nation's best college hockey player. Well, it's just, I mean, it's just uh, totally overwhelming. Yeah, it's a great honor, and I uh, really can't believe it's all happening right now. But uh, I think right now i got to put this the whole thing on the back burner. I mean, the program, I think it's made uh, great strides over the last five years, you know, being a national, nationally ranked and really, uh, you know, getting the name out in that. Uh, for myself, I mean, win a championship like this would just be uh, such a huge goal to attain that I can't even, can't even explain it. But, uh, I don't know, it's just, it's unbelievable. Jason told us it took quite a while for it to sink in. He was awarded the Hobie Baker Honor yesterday. College hockey's equivalent to the Heisman Award, winning the nation's highest individual honor. And Christine Pierce, a senior from RIT, Rochester Institute of Technology, awarded the Hockey Humanitarian Award for overcoming dyslexia and Hodgkin's disease to become a student-athlete All-America hockey player. Congratulations to her. Just underway here in our third period. Power play time remaining. And Umaine with that one goal advantage, trying to make that at least stand up. 20 seconds in. It's going to be critical here for both of these teams to get themselves under control. I'm sure the coaches were talking a lot about that in that second period intermission because things were simply getting out of control even in behind the, ben the benches. Everything on the line here, so much emotion overflowing. These teams have been in each other's faces. Even at times at the end of the second period, the coaches were getting in each other's faces a little bit. They want it bad, and well, they should. That's the wonderful part about sudden death, sudden victory, hockey, basketball, or whatever the sport is. And we're seeing everything overflow in this game here tonight. Steve Korea at center ice trying to get loose. He's been held up in the neutral zone quite frequently in this game. That's been one problem. Is can't get the free ice. Calling at the right point. Tried to send it on. Sadowski broke it up. Comes into the far corner. John Sadowski just underway here. Third period. UNH down by one. It's shorthanded for the next 36 seconds. Another crucial stage of what has been a wild back and forth game with multiple momentum switches for each side. It seems like one team is going to take control, and then the other comes right back. The Hadar goal, a good example. Barrett Heiston battles in the near corner. Tries to come free along with Dan Kerluck. He had a goal called back, as we saw a moment ago. Here's Heiston trying to make something happen. Banks it off the back of the goal. Comes out for Janik. Now Kerluck tries a backhander. It was deflected away by Enders and gloved out of the defensive zone by UNH. Excellent job there by Enders coming out and sliding across. Nick was on his backhand. That was an advantage for UNH, but Enders took away absolutely everything, blocked the shot, and still had his man tied up in front of the net. Todd tries to float that pass ahead. It's then Jim Ledger of the intercept. He'll send it down where Eric Lynn has got to play it. And his own zone, zone for the Wildcats. They're down by one, and we are back to even strength five aside. Play is whistled down at center ice. Well, I think Alfie Michaud had the number 
of the top line in the first period and well into the second period. They were frustrated. They had taken away a lot of the juice of UNH. But that goal by Hadar coming out of the penalty box should revive the big line. And that could be all the difference in the world. 69 of 71 shots. Unbelievable. 97.2%. An acrobatic young man we mentioned earlier on. He can juggle for hours, apparently. He's a really? great gymnast. He, wow. can, he can do one-arm handstands, back-over handstands. Unbelievable stuff. And he's showing it all on the ice here in this tournament. You know, in French, the name Michaud means lukewarm. Well, here, I dare say he's been Wait. scorching red hot. You bet. Wait Without that. question. Comes out of the face-off circle on the near side. Played forward by David Bush. Comes to Ryan Cordero. Makes a good move to get by one defender. Got by A.J. Begg, but couldn't control in the offensive end. Lipwitz almost lost it with Ledger right in his face. Well, that's the aggressive nature that I talked about of the, U the University of Maine defensemen. They will take runs at players, but they have to be careful because that's the price you can pay if you miss. Stolen away. Grabbed by Walsh for a moment. Then Tim lost control. A.J. Begg on back check. Got it his way. Here's Steve Korea. No points yet in the frozen four. Trying to change it here. Jets across the line. Korea looking at a great backhander. Ripped it wide. Hoffman did not have to make a stop there. And Tratnik at center ice sends it all the way into his own corner. The speed of a Korea, no matter what the first name is, always puts fear to the hearts of defensemen of the other team. On that last rush, Steve Korea and Maine had UNH back way inside their zone. Unfortunately for Steve Korea, he missed the net on the back end. I don't know if it was deflected or not, but just the mere fact of him gaining speed and getting to top speed very quickly had the defenseman back way into the zone. Korea at the top of your screen. Watch how these defensemen back off way too far. They're down below the tops of the circles. I think Steve was so focused on getting a good backhand shot away, he himself did not realize how much room he had in the slot. He could have stopped up changed on to the forehand and just ripped one at the net and no one still would have gotten to it. East Regional MVP. Also the winner this year the sportsmanship honor in Hockey East. Remember his brother Paul on the Lady Bing in the NHL. So it says a lot about Steve Curry and everything he does on and off the ice for the UMaine program. A senior and a Hobie Baker finalist. One of the ten best in the nation. Here's Mark White. Plays there for Enders along the near wing boards. He darts up ice. He turn pass for White. pitches all the way in as a defenseman trying to center. And no one home. And Heights in the intercept. He'll clear down himself. UNH has used the far side of the ice more effectively than Maine has throughout this game. In other words, when they come up one wing or the other, they'll make the cross ice pass. And more often than not, the U University of Maine defenders are all on one side and have to recover quickly. And they lose control. Just get a remark, Brian, how much ice time the top line was getting here in the third period. You cannot afford to turn your back on any one of these three guys in the top line in the University of New Hampshire. The quick pass, Souza, all alone. Maine got crossed up. You're absolutely right, Dave. Krog finds Souza. Souza redirects it. Nothing Alfie Michaud can do on this one. Right on the doorstep. And cool and calm under fire, Mike Souza has been just spectacular here in Anaheim. Oh, boy, everyone. Buckle up. We have got a tremendous finish in store here on ESPN. Our exclusive coverage of the Frozen Four and the NCAA Hockey National Championship. We are tied at two. Now Krog ready again for Souza across the line. Jason Krog in front trying to hit Hadar. He and Souza has scored. In the game Thursday against Michigan State, the top line accounted for nine points total. They've got both goals here. Souza pokes it into the corner along the dasher. Hadar recovers. Tries the center. Maria looked to pick it off. He got nailed for his troubles himself. And it comes out to the neutral zone. Steve Korea gets around one man. Onside. Across the line. The Rose! Hit the post! Corey the Rose off the iron! Can you believe it? Now three on two the other way. Not man rush. Haydar across the line. It is offside. But barely by a stride. This game goes back and forth. You just can't tell who in the world is going to take advantage. The Rose off the iron. And still we're tied. 
Frequent heartburn. Is it worse at night, especially after dinner? Mm-hmm. Have you treated it, even changed your diet, but still suffered two or more days a week? Mm-hmm. Has your heartburn been a persistent problem for you? Mm-hmm. Your heartburn may be due to a potentially serious condition called acid reflux disease. Ask your doctor about Prilosec. For many people, one capsule daily provides 24-hour complete heartburn relief. Ask your doctor about Prilosec and if it's right for you. The most common side effects are headache, diarrhea, and abdominal pain. Want 24-hour heartburn relief with one daily dose? Ask your doctor about the 24-hour complete heartburn relief that's possible with Prilosec. Dentine Ice cools your breath twice. First, the cold minty shell chills you down. Then, the Sub-Zero flavor puts your breath on ice for a long, long time. Dentine Ice cools your breath twice. Mike Souza has been spectacular here in Anaheim. This is in game one. His first goal, a very opportunistic play, and he buries it in behind the Michigan State goaltender. Then this is a terrific play. Look at the cool and calm and the stay with it to shovel it home, and then tonight, picking his spots to get open. Down at the bottom of your screen, circles up, uh, gets it over to Souza. Outstanding stuff. Mike Souza has been phenomenal. Four multi-goal games this year for the junior left wing from Wakefield, Massachusetts. He tied a season high with four points in the game against Michigan State. He was 0-4 for four points, four assists against UMass earlier in the year. On a great shot. Along the Dasher lost control for Metcalf. Mitrakos, who has had a huge frozen four as well in two big games. Now this line that has been so good, Gite, Dimitrakos, and Kerluk trying to come alive. Sadowski sends it through. He'll try to create again. Edrashitsky, he's hit hard. Chad on a freight chuck will try to come free himself. Goes around Dimitrakos. And Ben Gite comes free. He and Dimitrakos, the two goals scored for Maine. Souza and Hadar have tallied here for UNH. And guess what? We are all tied at two in the national championship game. O'Brien sends that forward. Reflected first, and Metcalf will lob it in the defensive zone. Lipowitz almost lost control with Matthias Tratnik, who's played so well here in the Frozen Four, right in his face. And Tratnik's done a great job. He had an excellent game last game, and he's always in the thick of things, turning pucks over. Turn over here on the move. Jim Ledger trying to get back to Vitorino. He had charged down right through the circles. Jim Ledger at the goal line in the near corner. He battles there with Steve O'Brien. Chapolsky tries to get it free, and O'Brien, while prone on the ice, throws it out of his own zone. We've got a whistle. Coming up Thursday, 7.30 Eastern Time. National Hockey Night at ESPN, Pens and Flyers without Eric Lindros. Out with a collapsed lung after getting hurt against Nashville the other night. John LeClaire tied with Yager, 39 goals. Yarmer leads the league, 81 assists and 120 points. It all comes up Thursday night on ESPN. For more, log on to ESPN.com. A part of the Go Network, Go.com. Well, a lot of people up in uh, Maine will be watching this game. Who's that guy on the top of the list? Gary Thorn? Ooh. Big John good hockey announcer, that's who. I think everything else announcer. Yeah, he'll have one eye on this game, that's for sure. Two, two, tilt. Here from the pond. About 12,000 fans here tonight. Much bigger crowd here tonight. Near sellout in Anaheim for the championship round. That center ice push lost control momentarily. Comes away to Tim Walsh. Try to lead Cordero along the near wall. It's a big hit there. Now Stewart. Crosses the line himself. Had the game winner the other night. Away on the mid high stand run. A great save made again. Down low. What a stop. How many times did it happen? Caught making a tremendous save. And it's cleared away again. At center ice. Hadar goes around. Eck. He's wrestled down. No call. Well, you know the UNH fans one and one there in the corner. Kronk throwing his weight around a bit. Hadar tries the center for Souza. He was held up slightly at the goal line. And you may clears the zone again as we're heading down to 13 minutes left in regulation. Both teams trying to draw some penalties here. There have been so many calls throughout this game. And with, it, with everything hanging in the balance in this 2-2 game in the third period, the power play now would certainly be critical. Steve Puria blasts in along the left wing, tries to break. Stop and go move for LaRose. 
And a whistle stops play with 12.49 to go. A violation in the main offensive zone. Faceoff at center ice when we come back. Conklin making a huge stop a moment ago to keep this game tied at two. It's over. on his mind. Mm -hmm. He's a nacho loving fool. Don't stand between the man and his nacho. Nacho. Oh, yeah. Fungalicious. Right now at Taco Bell, big bad nachos, Bell Grande, only 99 cents when you buy a large drink. That's over a buck off, dig. Nacho. There's the Jungle Cruise at Disneyland, and of course in Fantasyland, that is the carousel I know because I took our four-year-old five times this week <laughs> in Toontown. She loved the kid coaster in the back there by Mickey's house. Michael Heister, the chairman of the Walt Disney Company, certainly enjoying as a huge hockey fan this tremendous national championship game here from the pond in Anaheim. 12.49 to go third period. We are all knotted up at two. Somehow, Humane lost track of the top line toward the beginning of the period. Hadar, Souza, and of course the rest of the company made them pay. Darren Hadar made a really good point uh, yesterday when I was talking to him. He said, we lost to BC a couple of weeks ago. We ran around in overtime, and it was a tight game. It taught us a lesson in tight games not to run around. Then we came back the next game and beat the University of Michigan 2-1 in overtime in order to get here to Anaheim. And so I feel like looking at what I'm seeing out here on the ice that they were running around for a time they must, must have talked to themselves about that and got themselves back under control across the line Cullen goes all the way himself and the net is knocked off the pegs Dave Cullen co-captain senior defenseman charging all the way through creating some havoc in the UNH defensive zone Ty Conklin talk about going to the net strong this is it David Cullen Handles the puck as well as any defenseman in the NCAA hockey. Drives wide, just throws it into the crease and stuffs it there. You have made players going to it in any direction possible. It's like Magnus Lundback ended up going head first right into it. Ouch. Oh, it was Heiston, 37, not 32. Heiston has done that effectively well here in Anaheim. He goes to the net every single shift. They've come in third leading score on the team. He's reading the all turning and a first team all hockey East performer and showing why. A tremendous performer. His uncle John Cullen. Actually has three uncles playing the NHL. John, of course, recently with Pittsburgh and Tampa Bay before overcoming the cancer. Now uh, assistant coach with the Lightning. He's learned quite a bit growing up there in St. Catharines, Ontario. Under 12 minutes left, third period. Brilliant game from the pond. He showed leads for the defense, and this is David Cullen. Lost the handle momentarily. Metcalf plays in the far corner. Krog tries to take advantage. Jason Krog on the ice in front. Jedrzejewski was there. Comes right for O'Brien. And Jedrzejewski was set up right in front of Alfie Michio. Almost had a golden opportunity. O'Brien throws down low. Krog was there again. Jedrzejewski forces in front. Made a great pass. But no one home in the low slot. And O'Brien will march out along with Cullen. O'Brien trying to win it back and eventually takes it from Dave Cullen. The game's sort of under control right now. The recklessness that was apparent earlier on, certainly through much of the first and second period, has now settled down. It's a 2-2 hockey game. Nobody wants to make any mistakes out there. Everybody trying to pick their spot. If there's an opening, turn it into the winning goal. High pitch drama will start to really increase very soon here. We've had a good dose of it already. Three of the intercept in his own end. Sends out to center ice. Christian Brignalo at the red line. Plays to the near wing boards all the way in. And the play is whistled down with 10.48 to go here in the third. The shots right now. UNH 37-24 for Jason Frog, the Hobie Baker Award winner. And the Wildcats in a tie game. And he's so 
Melo, as you were talking about, in terms of his mood, he didn't yeah. see any panic in UNH when they were down by two goals in this game. We've seen everything from the big line in this UNH that we expected, just like we saw in their semi-final game. They have contributed again here tonight, the way Sousa and Hadar work when Krog is being watched very closely. Six goals, eight assists in the Frozen Four for the Krog line. Not bad. Nine points in the first game. Frozen Four semifinal victory, 5-3 over Michigan State. Krog to the left of Conklin. Maury LaRose, who's had a big game. And Sadowski will go head-to-head. Marcus Gustafson is waiting to the left of LaRose. He's got a huge shot, as does Corey. And it's cleared out to the neutral zone. And Marcus Gustafson has had some scoring chances in this game, especially early on, but he wasn't able to bury. He, he's due. Gustafson will give Chase into the far corner. The Lipwitz tries to bring out himself. Here's Korea looking to center. Had Gustafson set up just to the left of Ty Conklin, who's backed up deep into his own net. On the far wall, the dash. Korea comes free with it. Steve Korea and Rivera hit hard. Sadowski got a good piece of him and ran him into the end boards. Now Chad on a freight chuck inside his own blue line. Off the center ice. Run back the interception, though. And he'll send it in as well. Line change for each team. Lipwitz down ice. Freight chuck in his final moments of this shift. Tips it down. Allowing his new teammates to come on ice. Intercepts. Chapolsky charges in. Jason Chapolsky sends it. Front. Good opportunity. Fights it. Chapolsky again. Chuck. And a shot rebound loose. And a whistle. That's going to be crease violation. Crease call. You cannot be in the crease in the college game at all. Regardless of puck before or after as it is in the NHL game. And it comes out to one of the face-off dots in the neutral zone. Alfie Misho sharp in this last sequence. We've seen a lot of hitting in this game. In spurts, early on, we saw an awful lot of it. Korea and his line mates on the last shift got pounded around behind the net. There's Alfie Michaud defending that crease extremely well. And there's the crease violation that we talked about. That's why the whistle was blown. And here's where Korea just gets crunched. And then he gets roughed up a little bit, too, by John Sadowski for his troubles. No penalties called. Well, in the far corner, lost his edge. Trakulski. Johnny Rogers getting time here with C.J. Fisick, number 18. Fisick controls the goal line in front, tries to go for Rogers, who's tied up. Manhandled by Cullen, sent down hard. Now the other way. Tyson tries to send out a shot. It's actually her luck on the backhand try. And it was knocked down all the way into the offensive zone. And an icing call as soon as it crosses the goal line. A lot of physical contact, and someone's lost the lid. Fans a little bit upset here. I think that there was no uh, penalty call perhaps on David Cullen, but I thought David Cullen did just a really good job of coverage in front of his own net. you got to play strong. There he is against Johnny Rogers. He knocks Rogers down as Rogers is going for the puck, and yeah, I guess you could say, well, possibly there could be a penalty call, but on the ensuing play coming back down the other end of the ice, Dimitrakos, the man with the good hands, was trailing, wanted the puck, but never got it. Big face-off for Bobby Stewart to the right of Ty Conklin. Head to head with Walls. Quick shot sent right on. Conklin didn't know where it was. It was Heiston. With a wrister inside the left circle. Ty Conklin squeezing the pads and hoping it did not squirt through and trickle across the line. Yeah, he wasn't quite sure where that one was. Ty Conklin's come back a long ways. I think he was a little upset with himself earlier in the game on some of the goals that he allowed. but. A big save that he made sliding earlier in this third period, I think, has restored his confidence. That was the last play off the faceoff. Sent down ice by Bush. Janik lost control, almost intercepted there by Bush at center ice. Again, Humane on the attack. Angus Lundback is getting time because Walsh is injured in this game and not able to play for Humane. Here's Bobby Stewart. Shovels that forward beyond the red line. Comes right to Lundback across the line himself. Try to create some offensive tries here for UMAH. Team fairly conservative. Hadar across the line himself. Colin heads him off the pass. That comes to Vitorino. Right around Souza, who is there on the forecheck. Almost intercepted by Krog. We know how dangerous he can be. Lynn lost the handle. And Cullen. See the score out to the far wing boards. 
Rolling down to eight minutes left for regulation. We've seen one OT throw already involving Maine. They beat BC 2-1 on Stewart's game winner. Across the line. The smart players will have a sharp eye for tired opposition out there, Dave. Critical situations. Ledger centers, but no one home. Tratnik was crashing the net. Along with Vitorino. On back tries to clear. Lynn has got to wait for his teammates to clear the zone. They do have a touch-up rule. Once you clear the zone, the delayed offside is waved off. But UNH fails to do so on that exchange, and they'll play it again on their own end. Center ice. A.J. Biggs spins and fires off the far wall. Lipowitz keeps it alive for UNH. They'll look to pressure the puck as much as possible. That is their game, especially in the neutral zone, looking for turnovers. Korea. Real speed and stop and go. That kind of looked reminiscent of Paul, except, of course, a left-handed shot. Sadowski trying to break out the other way. Has Jedrzejewski with him. And deflected into the near corner along the wall. And that's the red line again. The biggest difference in the first half of the game and this second half is the fact that one-on-one -on -one UNH players with the puck against Maine defenders, they were beating the Maine defenders in the first half. The second half of the game, the Maine defenders, I'm talking forwards and defensemen, have done a much more solid job and not been getting beat one-on-one, -on -one, especially at their own blue line from their end. Rose almost got free. Amy Trucklis has had such a great frozen four, can't find the handle. Chapolsky and Fysik. Along with Johnny Rogers. Eck makes sure he doesn't get in anyone's way. And Gite almost lost the handle in his own end. A dangerous play. Of Janet. Chips that forward. Good play for Gite. Couldn't quite find the handle cleanly. Enders takes him out along the end boards. And it's clear all the way down ice. Bad pass from Dimi Trucos trying to get it to Janet at the point. Quickly a breakout play left for Kerluck. And Kerluck had one taken away. And Vitorino, his teammate, was in the crease ahead of the puck. And how big a play is that right now? Mm. My goodness, that would have been a 3-0 lead. All the air would have been out of the sails of UNH. They dodged the bullet there and came back and narrowed the gap to 2-1 to one shortly after. Watch out, everyone. Cross line back on the ice. They've got both goals in this game. Magnus Lundback will bring across the line himself. Darts through traffic. Now he'll stop with the setup. Stewart on the move shot. Saved by Conklin. Bobby Stewart bidding for another game-winning goal. 5.47 to go in our exciting third period. Which coach, Dick Camille on the left, Sean Walsh on the right, will have the game winner on their bench. Whenever you call, wherever you call, wherever you're calling from, when you switch to Sprint Sense anytime, every long distance call on Sprint is just a dime a minute. And now you get up to 100 minutes of free calling on our dime. Call 1-800-PIN-DROP now, and every minute of every day can be a dime well spent. Your calls from home, your calling card calls, even calls to your personal 800 number are now just a dime a minute with Sprint Sense anytime. Come live in a world created around you, where calls on the road cost the same as calls from home. And having a personal 800 number means collect calls are a thing of the past. Call 1-800-PIN-DROP for dime a minute calls 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Even on calling card calls, too. Switch to Sprint Sense anytime now, and you'll also get up to 100 minutes absolutely free. 1-800-PIN-DROP. Sprint ahead. Jason Kroc, number one in the nation. Total points, goals, assists, points per game, assists per game. A new UNH record for assists in a career and a season. What a year he's had. And the line, again, very effective. In the Frozen Four, 14 points. They had nine the other night, five here tonight. Susie was two and two. Hadar had a big game against Michigan State. And of course, Grog was two and one. The second line center, John Sadowski, said to me yesterday, we always trust the big line to get the job done. And they have got the job done last game and tonight so far, although it's not over. And that last goal, which is going to decide this game probably, will obviously be incredibly big and critical. Krog needed a huge game to tie the great Ralph Cox all-time scoring record for a career at UNH. He needed six points. Anything can happen with him, though, is a possibility. Stewart, a giveaway in the low slot. A shot was blocked away. Good break and excellent positioning defensively. Christian Bregnall now break out the other way. Roger stop and go move. Trying to hit Pysing. Merritt Heiston held up by Bregnall. Nice back check in his own zone as he rubbed out. Bear Heiston. 
two excellent plays there by Bragnallo. He blocked that uh, shot earlier on in the shift. Just a terrific job, and then a huge check over on the far wall. Chapolsky lobs that into the offensive zone for the Wildcats. Line change. Now LaRose charges across the line himself. For LaRose, sharp angle shot. Conklin was handcuffed by it again. It seems like they're going into the body a lot toward that catching glove of Ty Conklin. And he juggles but makes a nice save. Storyline, our Nike storyline for tonight. Sousa goal and an assist. The top line has been outstanding. Nico Dimitrakos once again has been excellent. Mainly the disallowed goal in the second period. Brian, that makes the difference. And the Nike replay is the disallowed goal. Kerluck just came out of the penalty box, makes a terrific play on the two-on-one. But watch the top of your screen. That's Vitorino skating through the crease. In college hockey, you cannot skate through the crease. It's an automatic whistle. And the whistle was blown there and disallowed that goal. Off the last faceoff, Eck a slap shot. Conklin made a rather dangerous save. That was dramatic. It was bobbled, and it almost trickled between his legs for the go-ahead with under five minutes to go. My, oh, my. Rhodes takes a big draw with Prague, and it comes out for Susan. We saw a moment ago his numbers. Hadar had the huge breakaway goal shorthanded. He had just cleared the penalty box. That made it a 2-1 game. Hadar charging foot across for Sousa. Save made by Elfie Mishak in. Sousa, another attempt. That would be his second straight two-goal game. Almost the go-ahead. Now Gustafson tries to spring Steve Curry along the far wing boards. Headed off with a play by Jamie Filipowicz, but a giveaway. Curry was headed off ice, maybe on a change. But he saw the crazy bounce off the end boards and kept the play alive. Curry is sliding somehow. Able to dive and keep it in the offensive end, at least briefly. Finally, a line change for UMaine. Alfie Michaud saves the day again for the University of Maine. That was a great scoring chance for New Hampshire. Top line creating so much. Sanowski and A.J. Beck come together. On a break, Chuck sends forward. Try to get that one for Matt Jedrzejewski. Instead, comes the Black Bear attack one more time. By Nico Dimitrakos, the freshman outside the circle, a big shot. It was deflected high in the air. Kerluck tried to get out of the way. And Conklin able once again to snuff out the humane attack. Alfie Michaud has come up one more time with a huge stop on Michael Souza in front, shutting the door on UNH. It would have been the go-ahead goal. We've been watching you every time you move, every time you bend. Every time you breathe. That's how we got to be the best, most advanced sports nutrition company in the world. Twin Lab, we can't stop thinking about your body. Visit GNC today to get 20% off all Twin Lab sports nutrition and enter the Power Trip sweepstakes to win a Corvette, Harley, or thousands of other great prizes. How do you go from being ranked number one to number 363 overnight? Turn pro. Case miss. Sean Walsh told his team before the regional play, it was kind of like a golf tournament. Each game being nine holes, we've got to cover four games with nine holes, make it 36 total, each period being three holes. And that's kind of the analogy he used to try to get them through. Well, right now, what do you think? Big birdie putt on the line for each team. Yeah, I Without say. question. So much on the line now, 3.40 to go in our third period from the pond. This is no snow here in Anaheim like they had at Scottsdale. The senior, how about that? On the end boards. Amy Trakos tries to come free with it. Enders will flip him down. No call, though, from our referee Mike Noah, who had nine penalty calls in the second period. For the third, we've been pretty quiet in that department. UNH tries to make the attack the other way. On a break, Chuck on the move. Try to center that for Jedrzejewski. 
Nadowski out there as well, looking for a wraparound try. Filipowicz at the left point. Moves it down low. Gite in his way. On a bridge up front of center. He's out there for Steve O'Brien. He looks to dump it down low. It was deflected just wide. Nadowski was battling in the low slot. Just outside the crease. On a freight show, wrapped up from Dave Cullen and a whistle. On a face off deep in the U Main zone. Misho again will be tested. Healthy Misho has allowed two goals tonight. If it weren't for him, it probably would have been six or seven against. There have been ter terrific scoring chances against him. The numbers on him so far are 39 saves. Rebounds allowed 15. The fact that he does give up rebounds, but when, he, when you're inundated, it's pretty tough to control everything. Chances allowed off rebounds, nine but he can't be faulted on a lot of those situations, trust me, just because of the onslaught of UNH, particularly the big line. Dick Umilly sends the big line out whenever he can, but he's got a terrific effort, as both these teams have, from everybody on the ice here tonight. Dick Umilly, Hockey's Coach of the Year, ninth year at UNH, and an alum from the Wildcats in Durham, and he told us yesterday what this would mean for him coming through the system as a player, as an assistant coach, and now as the head coach to take home the national championship in their first ever appearance. Tommy Stewart and Humane have their ideas. Across the line himself. T.F. Heiston on the move. Almost did it. Great feed there from Bobby Stewart playing center ice tonight. Instead of his normal wing spot. Brendan Walsh out of the Humane lineup thanks to a leg injury. Magnus Lundback knocked that down and it is offside. Enders will take offense to the late shot. NHL doubleheader is coming your way. Two games to talk about. Playoff drive is heating up. And ESPN 2 is the best place to tune in. Devils take on Carolina Tuesday, 7 o'clock. Devs lead the Atlantic Division with 91 points. The Canes lead Florida by 6 in the Southeast Division. And then Bruins, Panthers, Wednesday, 7.30. Bruins in 8th place in the East right now in control. The Panthers trying to get in either by winning their division or catching Boston for more. Log on to ESPN.com, a part of the Go Network, Go.com. One of the disturbing things for UNH is when there are quick turnovers, they're backing in too far into their zone, and it gives Maine a chance on the rush a couple of times in this period. I've seen where they backed in very far into the tops of the circles. A rose for Korea, but he was sandwiched by two defenders. Now Souza the other way. Top lines on the ice again for each side. Two minutes to go in regulation. Marcus Gustafson darts across the line himself into the offensive zone below the goal line. Along the dasher, O'Brien wraps him up. All the best five players are going to see most of the ice time from here on in as much as they can. Metcalf tried to get in the way of the UNH attack, and here's Krog. Cross ice for O'Brien. Rolling down to 90 seconds left in a thriller from the pond. 2-2, two, two, we are tied. Souza across the line. Cullen. And Souza just flips that right toward the net. You never know what's going to happen with Hadar crashing in from the right wing. Well, you mentioned the big star is going to get a lot of time, and especially Souza uh, and uh, Hadar and Krog, because they have played a lot already, but they have been roughed up, and they, they've lost a little bit of a step. You can't blame them for that. A lot of ice time over the last two games, under pressure, that takes some of your energy away. And these main guys that we talked about early in the game pride themselves on being physical and being strong. They feel they can play the one-on-one -on -one battles and wear you down. And they have taken a step out of the big line. That may be telltale with a minute and a half to go in a 2-2 game. And Gita, he has one of the two main tallies along with line mate Nico Dimitrakos. And Jedrzejewski and Gite, a big draw with a buck 33 left in regulation to the right of Alfie Michaud. He remains net minor, puck loose inside the circle, and the Bears come free. Doug Janik pokes that ahead from Kerlock outside the left circle. Sent down by Anders Lundback. Loose there for Gite along with Dimitrakos. Gite lost the handle. And it comes free for Chad Onofrecha along the near wing boards. Jedrzejewski breaks it himself. He's got a man free. Jedrzejewski drives the pull. The trigger was broken up by Lundback at the last possible second. Excellent play there by Lundback. Never gave up on the play. That was critical. Otherwise, it's a goal. Michaud does not have a stick. Alfie Michaud, no goal stick. Finally, it's good at the neutral zone. He's got his lumber back. What was that dangerous for you, Maine? 45 seconds left in regulation. Who is going to take control from the pond? Blasted over the boards, out of play. That means a face-off in their own zone by the co-captain, Dave Collin. Dangerous play. Everybody get a little quick breather here in this final push. 
But the great defense on that last shift could very well have saved the game here for U of Maine. Vitorino going to the net, and there's Lundback being really strong on the puck and not giving up on it, snuffing out the play because Vitorino didn't know he was coming from behind. And I think he had just gotten himself into a good scoring position, was about to pull the trigger, and Lundback took that all away. And remember here, Dave, 39 seconds ago, if it's still tied, we clean the ice surface and go until there is a winner in overtime. Top line again out there for UNH. Lipwich tries to hold that in. Lundback had other ideas. Cullen banks it off the far wall. Half a minute left, regulation time, a 2-2 game. For all the marbles here at the pond, the NCAA Hockey National Championship, the frozen four from Anaheim. Metcalf tries to ship it around the boards. The intercept comes out to the point. Flip with a shot. It was blocked. Never got there. Metcalf helped block it down. Ten seconds left in regulation. O'Brien at center ice. Cross ice. Michael Souza on the move. Big shot. He missed the net. Not by much. Puck loose. Colin clears. And that'll do it. Oh, Michael Souza came so close to winning a national championship for New Hampshire with a huge slap shot from the left point. Can you believe that? And huge it was. Again, UNH has been very effective at using the whole width of the ice, much more so than me. Now, on this last play in the dying seconds, Souza will end up with the puck on the far side with time and room. He measures it, and does he ever crank it? And just got by on the far side. That had Alfie Michaud beaten. So close. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Perfect example all. of the emotion. We have a full intermission break here. ESPN News is next here on ESPN. 2-2 after regulation. Overtime comes up in a few moments from the park. We've asked the number three, four, and five hitters of a major league team to help us remember 10, 10, three, four, five long distance, where calls are always 10 cents a minute. I don't want to ruin your gig, but I don't bat. And we talked about this being the 10th OT game in NCAA Division I hockey championship game history. Just last year, Bleak Center in Boston. You saw it on ESPN. Josh Langfeld for the University of Michigan against Boston College in sudden death OT gave the Maize and Blue a 3 2 final. They took another national title, a ninth overall for Red Barons. And the lesson from that replay is there's no such thing as a bad shot in overtime. Shoot from anywhere, anytime. So here we go. Sudden death. First goal wins it. There are 20 minutes up on the board. And again, Conklin kind of handcuffed the shot from the blue line. That's a very emotional year also for the University of Maine and trying to deal with a very difficult loss. You see the RV on the back of... Peter Metcalf's helmet. That is for Richard Britt, who is the former equipment manager. Just 24 years old this year when he was tragically killed in a car accident up in Maine. So the team has put on the decal, RV on the back of their helmets, and also the 99 jersey on their bench. They hand it to the player who scores the winning goal every time they have a victory. We saw it come out the other day in their win over Boston College. The sixth man on the ice for Maine. Lipwitz trying to get it out of his own stomach set just wide by Stewart, not by much. Heiston battles in the near corner. Lundback tries to come free. Shot by Stewart, didn't miss again by a whole lot. Went glove size, he ripped that one right on Conklin. So off the hot main, some good tries. Here in the extra session, it's sudden death. Baseball tonight comes up next on ESPN after we decide our hockey national champion. Cullen carrying in on the move. Gustafson left it right there. The Rhodes. His shot was blocked. Ragnalo went down and made sure it didn't get the tie. Conklin. Now Christian will move it out of his own end. It's all Maine. The ice has tipped the Black Bears way to begin play in the OT. Ragnalo's played strong on the fence for UNH in the second half of this game and has blocked some really key shots. Maine came up with a good push early on. Got some good scoring chances. New Hampshire now will come back with the big boys, the cross line, and a face-off deep inside Maine's territory. Three of the last four title games have gone to overtime. 96, 98, and now 99. Michigan won at 96. Michigan won at 98. Now Wolverines will not repeat, of course, as national champs. Who will? Dethrone the Michigan Wolverines. Jason Prague and LaRose, a big draw. Sousa almost came free for a moment, then Janet clears the center ice. The Rose 
Gift deal will feed from Steve Perea. He's still over the blue line. Perea tries to regain. And Sousa banks it off the far wing boards to center ice. Janik up ahead. Steve Korea, nifty give and go move, but he lost it. Here comes Jason Coggs from room to maneuver. That is dangerous if you're humane. Tried to send it for Hadar. Into the corner, but Janik there first to break it up. And the Black Bears looking to spring Korea. Boy, he was out of the field again. Not that much. They missed that play. Good shot. Comes off the high glass. It was deflected. Hadar left it behind for a moment. Then he'll shovel in the offensive zone line change here. Something to keep in mind. Young players, especially like this, trying to score the winning goal and be a hero sometimes will extend their shifts and put so much effort into offense that they won't get off the ice in time. And if you miss, you're caught tired out there. The other team comes back down the ice and gets their great scoring chance and maybe ends it. Mitrakos on four check, trying to take advantage of a mistake. Don Sadowski follows up Cullen, though, the All-American there first. And Nico Dimitrakos at his own blue line. He'll march forward through the neutral zone. Shoves that ahead. It was knocked down first. Metcalf lost the handle. And trying to free Jedzieszewski on the move shot. And Michaud makes the stop. Matt Jedzieszewski got a quick snapshot from in between the circles on Alfie Michaud. You just have to love the atmosphere in overtime in hockey. It's just terrific. Every time somebody touches the puck and gets inside the end zone anywhere, the crowd just starts going crazy. You just sense the excitement. Everybody on the ice gets a little bit tense. The last shot by Jedusitsky was a good one on net. Earlier in the game, it wouldn't have meant as much, but now everything means so much. To the players and to the fans to have come a combined 6,270 miles including Kurt Russell from just here, of course, in Hollywood nearby. A native of Rangeley, Maine, and a big humane fan. Filippowitz sends it right on, and Michaud was not screened, saw it all the way, and gloves it down, a face-off deep in the humane zone. Excellent defense by Maine. Again, in the second half, they've got their game, their defensive game together much better. Easy save there for Alfie Michaud because everybody was boxed out. Watch the front of the net in front of Alfie Michaud. Look at the defenseman of Maine boxing everything out. There was nobody between the shooter and the goaltender. Of course, every draw so big. And one directly by Walsh. He sent it right on net off the faceoff. Michaud had to make a very quick save. Tim Walsh almost ended this thing very quickly. Cordera over skates. Andres Lundback comes into the offensive zone, tries the center. He'll do so on front. He came so close. Matias Tratnik was there, set up to the right of Conklin. A one-timer from Anders Lundback, and Tratnik almost won it for the Bears. Conklin makes the save. It comes out, and I think it hits his own defense, but yes, in the foot. So Conklin tracking the puck extremely well, down, taking away everything low. Oh, man. A pool shot off the back foot right of the UNH the defenseman. And Conklin was there, a little bit of luck, because that shot was actually going wide, but everything counts. Oh, man. UNH out shooting UMaine right now, 46-32. Just takes one at this point. And now some jockeying for position right here now, too. UNH has the last change. The referee getting on top of the situation wants Sean Walls to, sh to send his boys out there first, because he has to. Then UNH gets the last change. The saves by both goaltenders. Alfie Michaud, 44. Conklin, 30. 35 saves against BC for Michaud in the semifinal round. round. 32 saves for Conklin. Dick Umilly's UNH Wildcats against Michigan State. First game of the Frozen Four. This is the final game. This is perhaps the final period. Who will take home the crown? Kept in by Umay. Tyson tries to tip it loose. Puck is loose. And a call in the offensive zone that is apparently handling the puck. Or that crease call. Anyway, we're going to have a faceoff at the dot outside the blue line in the neutral zone. It's a violation against Humane in their own end. A pretty good sustained attacks here by Maine in this overtime period. They're getting to the net, just throwing pucks at the net. Conklin getting down and across, smothering everything low. The whistle ensued shortly thereafter. I'm not quite sure what the call was there. The referee was making a, a motion as if it was a hand pass. I believe that's what the final call was. So hand pass takes the face off out towards center ice. Sent into the offensive zone for UNH, but it is an icing call. 
And we'll get a face off all the way down on the other end of the rink here in Anaheim. Thursday night, 7.30 Eastern Time, it's National Hockey Night. Here on ESPN, the Pens and Flyers go head-to-head. Yarmer Yager lead the NHL with 120 points, 81 of those on assists. Penguins battling the Maple Leafs for the fourth seed in the East. Eric Lindros out for the Flyers for the rest of the regular season. John mcclair has got to pick up the slack with 39 goals. Dick Humilia's UNH team choosing to go big line against big line here. Rose, head-to-head. With Krog, Gustafson tried to plunge and get a piece of that. Good play by Metcalf to stop Souza's charge at center ice. Gustafson on the near point. He'll send it all the way down to the dasher. Filipowicz into the far corner. Souza tries to shove it beyond Corey LaRose, but he didn't get it there. It was sent right back to him. O'Brien can't clear. Hadar near giveaway. Jamie Filipowicz on the far wing boards tries to advance that. Looking for Krog, but he was hit hard from behind. Right at the center face-off circle. And LaRose will follow up with Filippowicz into the far corner. Jason Krog, the nation's best player. Lead there for Sousa. Live through the neutral zone and across the line, trying to get a shot off. And we got to an Alfie Misho, though, and it's broken up by Lundback along the near wall, sent right on again by Jason Krog. Sousa keeps the play alive initially. And at the center ice for Baron Heiston. He's got Lundback with him. Heist in a good move. Into the offensive zone. Tripped up. Tries the center. Puck still loose. Comes free to the point. Can't get charging in. Try to get a shot up. Can't do it. Krog wants to break out the other way. Does he have a long shift? Does he have enough gas? Jed Jashinsky. will follow up. Tries the center there. He had a man charging in also. Heist in comes free. There for Bobby Stewart. Across the line. Bregnalo broke it up. Line change here for Umaine. Now on a Craig Chuck on the move. Big shot. It's the net. Trying to go glove side. Jed Yashitsky keeps it alive. UNH trying to create. Chad on a Craig Chuck. Along the end boards. Matt Jed Out there for Steve O'Brien. Pitching in. O'Brien the defenseman trying to create now. Who will score the game winner? O'Brien a stop and go. Still controls the offensive end. Finally Umaine tries to break it up. And spring. Nico Dimitrakos. We've seen how dangerous he can be. Jed Yashitsky across the line. Broke to way first and sent down ice. UNH has been more careful in this overtime than almost at any time during this game. I think they're a little bit uptight. Some of the guys are certainly tired. We saw that last at the end of the shift. You made a good point there, Dave. Krog gets a chance in the neutral ice area with some help coming from behind. He simply has no gas left in the tank. He'd been out there too long. That's the dangerous situations that I talked about. But Maine looking very careful. Even that big line, uncharacteristically, didn't have the confidence and the zip in their step that they have shown most of this game. Whereas Maine, more methodical, but yet energized in this overtime, has carried the bulk of the play. Matthias Tratnik will take the draw here with Cordero. To the left of Alfie Michaud. Janet coaches it forward. One back tries to catch up with it. Push into the far corner. Cordero will follow up. Tim Walsh out there as well, centering the slide. For UNH, big hit from Bush. Bagnall tries to send it on. Charging through is David Bush. On the end boards with Matthias Tretney. Into the near corner, grinding line. The fourth line out for UNH. Looking to create some chances. And Maine's Janik advancing the pass across the line himself to Jim Ledger. He's ripped down from behind by Cordero, the other number 24. Here's a good hit himself. Ragnallo at center ice. Starts to the neutral zone. A shot to Fleck, which takes a crazy bounce off the stick of Dave Cullen. In the far corner. And Gite across the red line. He is there for Cullen. The play is whistled down offside. 13.50 left in our sudden death overtime. On the rush that time, UNH did a great job. Eric Lynn standing up the line and turning him aside. But I think that the main defenseman and the main team has their confidence more in this overtime so far than UNH does. And it's probably more evident in the main defenseman how they are defending the neutral zone and their own blue line. We pointed out at the start of the game that when they're on top of their game, the main defensemen are like submariners out there. They take runs at the opposition forward coming up the ice. They have done so here even in overtime. They turn pucks over. They force UNH forwards to keep their heads up or get mowed over. And I think that has added up over the course of this game. 
and Maine is more full of themselves confidence-wise than UNH is. Saw Steve Curry a moment ago held scoreless in consecutive games this year only twice. It's happened again tonight after a rough outing against BC. Off the faceoff, Susan's shot was deflected. Went wide to the left of Alfie Michaud. Maine can't clear the zone. Hadar trying to keep it in. And O'Brien and Philippe with so key now. The blue liners at their own blue line and of course playing defensively on the rush because of the great speed you've got to really be careful that's still loose the rose comes free steve korea and marcus guts us in across the line korea is sent into the near corner korea flips in front The octopus, Conklin with two unbelievable things. Uh, arms and legs flying everywhere. I don't know how he got that second one. Still do not have a new national champ. Gustafson sets up the road that goes wide. And Conklin will take no further chance. He'll cover up. I'll bet you he'd like to see the replay on this one. He knows how he did it, or does he? Unbelievable. People in the audience are bowing down to him. UNH fans on their feet. Watch this play. Great play by Korea to throw it into the middle of the ice. There's the game right there. Stacks the pads. Then the rebound. The back of the lane comes around and kicks that one past a couple of startled main players seeing the national championship pass right before their eyes. Look at that right leg come around. Oh, my goodness. That's terrific. Call him the first try. The roll is on the second. Heiston out there with Stewart and Lundback on this line now for UMay in the offensive zone again trying to create. CJ Fisick's line seeing time here for Dick Umilly's Wildcats. Sports Center comes up next. Scott Vilpito. Walla highlights and the day's news in sports when we finish up for the pod here in California. We've seen it work the other way around. Alfie Michaud with some unbelievable saves in the first period or two energized his main team to come back down in the other direction. Confidence in your goaltender at any time is great. In overtime, it is everything. And look, what are we getting? There? Looks like we're getting penalties here. UNH has a player going, both players. Excuse me, one player from each team headed to the penalty box. Sadowski is going in for UNH. And Janik for Maine. I'm not sure what that's about. I never saw any indication by the referee before the whistle. They just went over to the box now, very much after the fact. John Walsh wants to talk things over and take the one-minute timeout here for good reason, because we are four on four for the next two minutes. So things will get wide open, and Coach Walsh wants to diagram a new play. The playoff stretch and the drive is heating up. And ESPN2 will be there to bring you the best games. Tuesday night, 7 o'clock, the Devils take on Carolina. The Devils lead the Atlantic Division with 91 points. The Canes lead four by six in the Southeast Division currently. Then on Wednesday, 7.30 Eastern, the Bruins and Panthers go head-to-head. -head. Boston in eighth place in the East. They look pretty good now for that playoff spot. Panthers battling to try to get in. For more, log on to ESPN.com. A part of the Go Network, go.com. John Walsh talking things over with his troops. This will be a four-on-four -four situation. A little extra ice to work with. We still have not heard the announcement yet of exactly what those penalties were. It's a puzzlement to me. And John Walsh, after they were called, took his time out and is discussing some definite strategy there with his team. Again, keep in mind, Tim Walsh, UNH. They play on the Olympic-size ice at Whittemore Center up in Durham, 200 by 100. Much more ice room here now, so we'll see if that creates an advantage. We talked a lot about that over the last couple days. They have practiced and, of course, worked throughout the regionals on the smaller sheet. And their statistics show, Dick Humilly actually uh, bristled a little bit. It's been brought up several times in the playoffs that UNH's statistics show that they are better on the big ice surface than they are on the small ice surface. Dick Humilly says, look, we've won a lot of big games in order to get here, and you certainly can't argue with that, and they have played terrifically here on the smaller regulation surface in Anaheim. Big ice 21-0-1 this year on a fridge jump. Charging in. So UNH has done very well on the larger surface. Here there's more room to work with. We'll see what factor it plays in our overtime. Coincidental minor calls. 
Janik and Sadowski. A hole for Sadowski roughing on Doug Janik. Now on the offensive end, Stewart cruising in, trying to get a shot off, broken up at the last moment. Lynn got there and made sure Bobby Stewart couldn't squeeze off the shot. Colin again charging in. Someone has lost a stick. It's Chad on a freight chuck. He'll go down to pick up his loose lumber in the far corner. Scrum for the puck, and it comes out along the dash for the near wing boards. I'll tell you what, Bobby Stewart has named the hero in the overtime the last game has been dangerous every shift he's been out here in overtime. Colin knocks it down with a high stick, and that will call and cause a whistle from Mike North, our referee here with 11.42 left, and still 104 in the four-on-four. Four. Bobby Stewart drove, drove wide on his last shift around Eric Lynn, but Eric Lynn made a terrific play to dive and get the stick out. He makes him go wide. He's losing his balance, realizes it, does not want Stewart to get to the front of the net. Great presence of mind there by big Eric Lynn. You can't let the guy go to the front of the net. He realized he didn't have enough speed on the turn, and Bobby Stewart certainly would have used that space and driven right through the crease and right through the net, I'm sure, if he had to. Nice job there by Lynn. Prague will take the draw with LaRose to the right of Alfie Misho. Wants a quick shot off a draw directly from the centerman. We've seen that with UNH a couple times. Flipwitz tries to keep it in. He trying to charge through the other way. Rose goes around one man. Rose still has possession in the offensive zone. He's got Steve Korea set up. Rose trying to get a shot off, but it found it high over the right shoulder of Conklin. 45 seconds left in the four on four. Here's Steve O'Brien. Cross eyes pass Jamie Filippoulos, a great defenseman. Leads Sousa the other way. Frog was charging in along the right wing. Lundback came first, though, to break it up. Here's Philip Witt. Centers it. Frog! Can you believe it? What a stop by Misho on Frog! Now Korea breaks out the other way. Steve Korea trying to win this thing for me. And stopped again off the side of the net. Can you believe it? Cullen was denied this time on an unbelievable pass by Steve Korea. Two captains denied on each end of the ice. First Frog, then Cullen. Can the drama get any more high-pitched here in Anaheim? I think the fans are worn out already. Terrific chances at both ends of the ice. Both goaltenders trying to outduel each other. Jason Krog got free all alone in front of the net. A terrific heads-up play by Jamie Filippowicz. Throws the puck down low. There's Filippowicz along the goal. He took a look first. Look at Krog. Nobody around him. Alfie Micho. Another one at the other end of the ice. Conklin smothering the play. Great stick work there. And then a little luck. That second shot hit the outside of the goal post. Jimmy Trock goes to draw here. 18 seconds left on the four on four. The luck is out there. Cullen and Peter Metcalf for UMaine. Final 10 seconds of the four on four. Here's Metcalf at the red line. Bob's that four, trying to hit Dan Kerluck on the move. Instead, on a free chunk. Right wing. Tina. Shot it was deflected off the stick of Cullen. And over the boards out of play. The coincidental minors are over to Sadowski and Janik, and we're back to even strength. Let's see if we can take another look at the save by Alfie Misho with Krog all alone in front of him. The biggest and best sniper in all of college hockey, Jason Krog, was all alone in front of him. And what he does so well is track the puck from behind. He knows that Krog is there. He could tell in advance. He saw him go for the redirection. Krog decided to go for the redirection rather than stop it and try and shoot because you never quite know if you're going to be checked from behind or not. Scoring chances in overtime, 7-3 to three in favor of Maine. Those are scoring chances, Brian, not shots in that stat. How about that? Yeah. That's excitement. Sadowski, Van Gite. He's got one of the UMaine goals here tonight. Amy Trocos tallied the other. Van Gite has tossed out of the face-off circle. Nico Dimitrakos to the left of Alfie Micho. Takes yet another huge face-off. They're all big now. Get your chance. Get the rebound. Low set just wide. Sadowski directed it just wide to the right of Micho. Oh, my goodness. Now Dimitrakos. Full head of steam. He's got Kerluck with him. Dimitrakos carries in. Centers, but it's broken up first. On a great shot. Boy, John Sadowski almost won this thing again for UNH. Nico Dimitrakos, a freshman, said he's learned a lot this year about defense. He ends up taking a face-off, but what he forgets to do is when you lose the face-off, you must tie up the other man's centerman. Sadowski is a smart guy. Sadowski wins the draw that goes to the net. Dimitrakos let him go. 
Sadowski with a chance to win the national championship. And Dimitrakos had to be going, oh my goodness, please stop this one. Elfie did. 5'10", junior centerman John Sadowski from Glenview, Illinois. Just missed by that much. He's got 15 points this year. That would have been a pretty incredible 16th. Filippowitz at the center ice. O'Brien looks to redirect that one. Shapolsky on the move between two defenders. It's some Shapolsky, some good speed. Rose tries to catch up with it along the end board. Shapolsky grabs it back again. He's out there with Rogers and C.J. Fisick out to the point. Filippowitz sends it right on. Collected wide again. Comes out for O'Brien. Bless the ball. Never got there. It was broken up first. Lundback got a piece of it. Andres Lundback. And it comes out to the near side again. Bobby Stewart on the move through the neutral zone. A little crisscross play. Has Heiston, who looked to knock it down out of midair. Comes to the near side. Shapolsky. Heiston gets it right back. He's with Magnus Lundback. Identical twin of Anders. Held in. Matt Cap throws it right foot. Rebound is Heiston. Another try. Still loose. Cartman lost his stick. He lost his goalie stick. He doesn't have it back yet. Out to the neutral zone. Somebody better go back and get that stick for him, or he's going to go get it himself. He did it Makes himself. a good time to do it. Heiston right on the doorstep. A couple of incredible chances. LaRose sends it right in front of the Dragon. They score! It's over! Gustafson wins the game! And the national championship! Marcus Gustafson, you mean, wins the title! of Maine. Sudden death, sudden victory. Wow, what a game. Watch how it develops and how the season ends for both of these teams. You take a look at Ty Conklin. He did everything he could in this overtime. Makes the original saves a couple of times. Quick turnovers. Gustafson is all alone in front. Conklin made the first one. Couldn't smother the rebound. And Gustafson's timing is perfect. He actually only got a piece of the original shot. His shot. Followed it up and buried it going top shelf. And he wanted to jump right out of the building after that one. 13th of a year. And Gustafson with the Rose in Korea had been shut down so effectively in this Frozen Four until the moment that mattered the most. And they have won their second national championship of this decade. Winners in 93 and again in 99. And Ty Conklin so brilliant in net for UNH making some incredible stuff. It's a shame that, that uh, somebody has to lose a game like this, Dave. I mean, you know, you just want it to go on and on, it seems, because it's just such tremendous action at both ends. Great plays, heartbreaking plays at both ends of the ice. Maine comes out on top. You know, Sean Walsh did something the other day before even the semifinal game. He said, well, all four teams are here, and the fact that we, we will see a national champion, everybody will decide who's the best team in the nation, but we will have a national champion for sure. Well, Brian, we are joined by the hero, Marcus Gustafson from UMaine. Marcus, an incredible moment. Is there any way to describe the feeling when you had the rebound, you knocked in the game winner? No, it's not. I, uh, I just want to try to get a quick shot off and he gave me the rebound. He'd been kind of shooting off rebounds all night. You know, and that's what that was our game plan. Get it to the net. And no, it's no feeling at all. I'm so happy right now. It seemed like you guys had a lot of uh, confidence, Marcus, coming out for the overtime. You really took it to UNH right from the drop of the puck. Uh, definitely. We, well, we went through the uh, overtime against BC, and and we were just talking about who was going to make the winning play. And we know we're strong. We're so strong physically. We've been working out so many times during the week of this whole year. And, finally pays off. 
Well, we're seeing the emotion on the ice that you guys enjoyed just a few moments ago in overtime. The approach you guys had must have been tremendous. Your 4-0 all-time and Frozen 4 OT games. Talk a bit also about your tremendous goaltending from Michaud who's kept you in this game time and time again. Oh, he, he won this game for us. They had so many good shots, so many great A's, and uh, he was tremendous tonight, and I'm so, I'm so glad I'm on my team. Marcus Gustafson, congratulations. You're 13th of the year, number 13. It's lucky 13 for you. Great job. Uh, thank you very much. So the Black Bears and Alfie Michaud from Manitoba, Canada. Steve Career, who was shut down until the end of this game, finally feeling the victory. It was Steve Career who said all week, Brian, hey, we hadn't made it this far since 95. The seniors never had a chance to reach this level and what it meant to the program. That's right. And you know what? Uh, all these seniors, their, their careers began out here on the West Coast, the Great Western Freeze-Out, a tournament they won as freshmen. Now it comes for full circle back in Southern California here in Anaheim as they win the NCAA National Championship. Bringing the crown back to Orono, Maine, more than 3,000 miles from here in Anaheim, California. We talked about that emotional moment with Richard Britt, their late equipment manager who was tragically killed this year, and they honor him with that jersey. And now they honor all of Maine with an incredible victory tonight. You know, Dave, there was such great work by everybody, seniors, freshmen on both teams. I don't remember a game in, in a very long time at any level I've seen with just such great action end-to-end. -end. The NCAA, I'm sure, is extremely proud of the way this has gone, and this final game is just a terrific culmination for everything that all these teams have worked for all year long. Our final score tonight from Anaheim, as congratulations go out to the UMaine Black Bears. 3-2 in sudden death overtime. Gustafson, the game winner of the University of Maine for the second time in school history, is the college hockey national champion. Tuesday night at ESPN2, it's National Hockey Night as the Devils take on the Carolina Hurricanes at 7.30 Eastern time. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com, a part of the own network, go.com. For Brian Engel and the entire crew here, this is Dave Ryan saying so long. Stay tuned now for SportsCenter.